starter, Rod Wooten, who's also capable in relief. He bailed out Fuhrer against Bowling Green two weeks ago for a win. Whoever runs the Hokies offense must face a mean, harassing South Carolina defense, featuring hard hitters like Marty Dye, Patrick Hinton, and Corey Miller. A defense that now ranks among the top three in the nation. If defenses prevail today and the game is a close one, the Gamecocks can pin their hopes on all-time leading scorer Colin Mackey. Three of his points came last season on a final minute field goal to give South Carolina a tie with Tech. By morning defeat that day, the Gamecocks went on to their third consecutive winning season. Sportsnet presents University of South Carolina football. Today, from Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia, the Gamecocks beat the Virginia Tech Hokies. Today's game is brought to you by the South Carolina National Bank. And by Buy Low. Buy Low, the name fits. Welcome to Lane Stadium on the campus of Virginia Tech. It's a beautiful spot, Black. In the shadows of Virginia's famous Blue Ridge Mountains. And what a setting we have for football here today. The good news is the rain, which fell most of the night and all of the morning, has finally let up. And we're expecting better weather for the contest itself. I'm Jim Thacker and happy to have you aboard for our live coverage today. And joining us again is our analyst, former Gamecock, Max Runniger. Thank you, Jim. It's good to be back. The rain has slowed a little bit. Uh, still very overcast. Sun's trying to poke out. I don't really think the wet conditions are going to help either team or hinder any, either team. Both have very strong defenses, and we'll get to that a little bit later. And now let's meet the other member of our broadcast crew down on the sideline, John Pritchett. One of the major components of this football game is going to be conditions, weather conditions, field conditions. We'll see as the game wears on which team prevails. Considering the current conditions, I would say it favors the Virginia Tech Hokies. The Gamecocks have the advantage in team speed. They may be limited a bit by this field. As you look across this field, you see it has a, a large mound across it. And then as we look at the length of the grass, probably this grass is as long as any grass you'll see in college football, sometimes exceeding up to four inches. This may be longer than any grass you'll see outside of RFK Stadium. The rain, now it rained all last night, as Jim alluded to. Although it broke up a little bit this morning from about 9.30 to 10.30, the tarp came off about 9.30, things look bright. It has clouded up a bit more. The rain is coming down. We'll see how the conditions reflect this game. Now here's this special message. We'll be back. This is Sportsnet. We expect a rock'em, sock'em type game here today between these two old rivals. For one thing, it's been the style they've played against each other in the past. It's the way they both like to play and both have great defenses. As for uh, the weather, well, it isn't expected to change the minds of Sparky Woods. He's expected to lean heavily on his fine young quarterback, Bobby Fuller, who's just been spectacular with over 62% completion so far. I think Bobby's done an excellent job the last, the first two games. He's done just what Sparky's asked of him. He's directed the team and led them to two nice victories. And if the Gamecocks have to go on the ground, well, they'll have their number one man back. Mike Dingle has come off a concussion, has practiced all the two-week layoff, and an hour set to go will start the game. If they have to take him to the sidelines, they can rely on a young man, Rob DeBoer, who was sensational in his debut against North Carolina. When Dingle went down in the second quarter of the North Carolina game, Rob came in and did just what Sparky asked him to do. He ran the ball with abandon, and he showed some, uh, some bursts there that I didn't think he had. Well, it certainly adds to the depth, if nothing else. As for what they'll have to face, Virginia Tech has another fine defense, as they always do every year, under Frank Beamer. And they're led by tackle Al Chambly. Al Chambly, an All-American candidate, 6'1", 249 pounds defensive end. They're going to depend on his strong pass rush. I think they put a lot of pressure on the, on the quarterback, and that's what they're going to ask of him. That means a, this guy, Damian Russell, at free safety may be having to play some man-to-man -man coverage. Play some man-to-man, -man, but he's got the speed, 4-3, and he can cover the field. All right, that's the menu for today's game that you're going to see live coming right up here between Virginia Tech, they won their last two games, and the University of South Carolina undefeated in two games. And coming up will be the toss of the coin and the kickoff next. Right on cue, the sun has broken through the overcast here at Blacksburg. Just as they were tossing the coin, which was won by South Carolina, the Gamecocks deferred to the second half. 
and the weatherman said it was to be clearing in the afternoon. He was right on the money. We have a little bit of wind, about 10 miles an hour coming out of the northwest, which will be from your left to right as you watch the game. And we expect to have perfect conditions for this game this afternoon. The field itself may be a little bit damp. There are the official referee Terry Monk and his crew, Rusty Spindell, the umpire, the linesman Bob McGrath, Wilson Gozier, the field judge, Van Goldmont, the line judge, the back judge. South Carolina leads this record, 9-7-2. It's been very close. Last year, 17 all at williams Bryce Stadium. And Colin Mackey is setting out to kick it off for the Gamecocks and back deep for Virginia Tech is Curtis Michael and John Jeffries. And it is taken by Michael, the speedster wide receiver over the 20 and is stacked up about the 21 yard line. And that's where Tech will take over. And coming in will be Will Fuhrer at quarterback, the left-hander who's very dangerous, Von Hebron, an outstanding tailback, and Phil Bryant who can do the full package at fullback. Receivers, and they're all fast, Marcus Michael, Nick Cullen, and the tight end, Greg Daniels. It's a good receiving core. And the lineman headed by Eugene Chung, who's an All-American candidate at a strong side tackle. And here is Fuhrer, first down, Tech runs the ball about 63% of the time. And the hand off the backfield is to Hebron. He's pulled out from behind by Joe Reeves. Reeves, who ran him down from behind, came from his inside linebacking spot and uh, caught uh, Hebron in the backfield. The defensive lineman for the Gamecocks, headed, of course, by Miller, Dye, Wilson. They're all very, very strong and very deep, by the way. The linebackers are good ones. Hinton, especially in the middle, Tolbert and Reeves guarding the flanks. The defensive backs have been untested so far because of the great rush, but they are fine young prospects. In motion comes Michael. It is second down, about 11 to go. And here's the draw play. The fullback Bryant up the middle gets a little bit of room over the 25. Marty Dye pulls him down around the 27-yard line. Tech will run a lot of draws, and they'll also run the, uh, the hit screen if they catch you uh, coming hard, which South Carolina likes to do. The Gamecocks this week are ranked number three in the nation in total defense, which is a tribute to the coaching staff for the Gamecocks. Now Fuhrer on third down about three. The give is off to the fullback, and Bryant looks like he has the first down. As he crosses the 30, Joe Reeves makes the stop, but it's a first down for Virginia Tech as they move the football strictly on the ground up to the 33-yard line. Just a straight dive play, Jim. Offensive line does a good job of blocking. Phil Bryant gets a good gain for a first down. And now Sturdivant has come in at wide receiver. He goes way wide to the right side, the top of your screen. Down at the bottom is Cullen, and Fuhrer on the draw fake is back in the pocket. That's over the middle, batted down. He wanted to go to his tailback. Hebron trying to isolate him on a linebacker, which is something Virginia Tech specializes in, but that was batted down by one of the charging linemen. Might have been Gerald Dixon. We're not sure. It'll be second down and 10, though, for the Hokies at their 33-yard line. South Carolina's given up on the average of only one touchdown per game in its first two victories. They got both wide receivers to the right side this time in the eye formation. They give against to Hebron. Good opening. Tipped up to comes over the middle. But great effort on the part of Hebron. Takes him to a first down over the 45. Patrick Hinton tripped him up as he crossed the 40. And Hebron kept his feet. Watch this. Little counter, Jim. Von Hebron hits a big hole. Patrick Hinton ends up make, tripping him up, actually. This young man is averaging 100 yards a game, so the Gamecock's going to have a tough chore with him. Well, he looked like a man on a flying trapeze that time with tremendous body balance. Another first down for Virginia Tech. At their own 46, started with in motion. Fuhrer back, play action. No, he gives up to his fullback, and Bryant is going to be ridden down near the line of scrimmage. Kurt Wilson, the co-captain, was the first to hit him. Then came Marty Dyer, the other tackle. And those two guys get you. It's usually curtains, but Joe Reeves helped out just the same. Pick up on the play of the motion gives him a yard, so it is second down and nine now. And the ball about the 46 and a half. Michael goes to the right. Bo Cullen, who's in the other spot, comes off the left side. Both these guys can really fly. Fuhrer has yet to go to the air. Here's Fuhrer back. Play action, rolling and looking. 
Fair with his first pass of the afternoon. He's not going to get it off. Went out of bounds, short of the 50, make it the 49 yard line by Glenn. Glenn Watts was out there trying to get a block on somebody, but the defense came across. Hinton was there, so was Reeves, and so was Corey Miller. And they chased him out of bounds at the 49. So it's a pickup of three and a half. It'll be third down and six for Virginia Tech at their 49 yard line. Big down for the South Carolina defense here, Jim. That was the first play pass called by Fuhrer. He was not able to get it off, although he rolled out of the pocket to get away from the rush. Here's the play action again. Fuhrer in the pocket, fires it down, incomplete, intended for Bo Campbell, uh, about the South Carolina 35. Back there covering was Stacy Robinson. And so it's fourth down, and in the punt is Chris Bosher. Furrier drops back really with a play fake. South Carolina is going to have to sit, was going to see a lot of this today. I think Mike Tolbert was pretty upset at the wet conditions there because I believe he would have had an interception had he not slipped. George Rush feels the putt inside his 20, and he'll be written down on great coverage right on the 20 yard line. That'll be a return of only about one yard by George Rush, who was back there with Robert Brooks. And for the first time today, South Carolina has its offense on the field and set to go. That means Bobby Fuller is out there. He's completed 37 out of 59 passes for 62.7%. And we'll come back to just, no, wait a minute. We're going to go here. First down for South Carolina at their 20 yard line. Fuller is in there with Dingle in the tailback. Two wide receivers set to the left side. Balance line. Fuller backing up. Going to throw on first down. Fuller with good protection. Fuller now runs out of the pocket to the 25 and is pulled down from behind by Don Davis. A big right tackle and Rusty Pendleton, an inside linebacker. Let's take a look at the starting offense for the Gamecocks. Bobby Fuller at quarterback. Dingle at the tailback. George Rush, the H back or fullback. The wide receivers, Robert Brooks, Eddie Miller, all can fly. Charlie Stewart, the, the tight end. And the interior line, I Harris is getting a start today, coming off his injury, and with the rest of the regular crew for the Gamecocks. That was a gain of six for Fuller, and it is second down and four at the 26 yard line. Here's Fuller hanging off to Dingle. Hesitation is backfield and pays for it. Rusty Pendleton grabbed him. And Dingle is taken down for no gain on the 26, helped by Jimmy Whitten, their all-star candidate at defensive right end. In this type of defense, this wide tackle six, you're not going to be able to hesitate like Mike Dingle here did here. Melendez Bird filled the, the gap nicely. Mike had to stutter step a little bit, and they brought it down for a loss. The wide tackle six were used by Bear Bryant and then brought here to Virginia Tech by Jerry Claiborne. And that's who Frank Beamer played for, Jerry Claiborne, so he continues to use it. Brooks in motion for South Carolina. Bobby Fuller back in the pocket, fires over the middle. It's complete to the tight end, Stewart. A flag is on the play. Stewart on a crossing pattern from tight end made the stop or made the catch. <laughs> and let's see what the flag's all about. If it holds up, it'll be just short of a first down. We have illegal motion against South Carolina. Well, the we calls against side. Robert Brooks Virginia apparently State. moving toward the line the of scrimmage when the ball was we'll snapped. Replay third down. Uh, so it'll be a five-yard penalty and third down continues. Defensive line, Al Chambly anchors this front four with Brian Campbell, a good one. Jimmy Whitten also an all-star candidate. So that's a tough line for Virginia Tech. Four linebackers, Hopkins and Herdman on the flanks, Bird and Pendleton operating inside, and a three deep defense, which we'll get to in a moment. It is third down and still four to go for South Carolina. Bobby Fuller brings Brooks in motion. Fuller's back. Goes down the middle deep. It'll be intercepted. Oh, the flag is thrown. They're going to call interference, but against whom? Scott Rice should have had that interception right in his hands, but he couldn't hold it. But the flag was thrown anyway. Good pressure by Chan Lee, the All-American tackle. And Fuller had to unload. He was going the deep post for the bomb. And the signal seems to be against Virginia Tech. Bobby Fuller had a lot of time to throw this ball. He Defensive pass interference. Virginia Tech, automatic first down. Offensive line gave Bobby plenty of time. Ken Watson ran a good post route. Bobby really forced this ball a little bit. I don't think he was, he really saw him as open as he did. 
Should have had the interception, but uh, interfer defensive pass interference. We really didn't see the interference. It occurred before the uh, player ran into our picture, but it's the first down for South Carolina on the 41-yard line. Gamecocks trying to get out of their own territory. Well, Bobby Fuller with just one setback. And that is Rob DeBoer. DeBoer goes left side on a slant. Rusty Pendleton slams him back hard. So the young freshman Omaha, was who, who was so scintillating against North Carolina, his first carry here today picks up nothing. Don Davis and Rusty Pendleton seeing to that for the Virginia Tech defense. They give him on his forward motion a couple of yards to the 43, and it'll be second and eight. Virginia Tech's ready for Rob DeBoer here, I believe, Jim. They do a good job, do a very good job. Rusty Pendleton stacks it up for no gain. Second down and a long eight to go here for South Carolina from the 43. High formation now they send Brooks in motion off the left side and Fuller drops in the pocket fires to Brooks caught over the 50 and down into tech territory for a first down around the 44. Greg Laster covering over there but playing a little bit soft behind Brooks and Brooks made a beautiful cut to the sidelines to take that perfectly thrown ball from Bobby Fuller. I think that South Carolina is going to be going to Robert Brooks quite a bit with that man man coverage with Robert's speed. I think they feel like they can really really take advantage of him. Bobby good drop just runs a quick a deep out. Greg Lasseter has to come up and make the play. Another first down play for Bobby Fuller. He brings Brooks in motion again. Fuller on the handoff. Up the middle comes DeBoer. Cracks down inside the 40. Picks up a nice game maybe six yards close to the 38 yard line. Rusty Pendleton, who's been in a lot of tackles so far for Virginia Tech, makes the stop for the Hokies. And Al Sh and Carl Platt comes in the lineup for the first time today. Rob DeBoer picking up where he left off against North Carolina. But Carl Platt is now in there at wide receiver. He's been on the injured list, and he's ready to go today, and he's in for the first time. Platt to the right and Brooks to the left. Eye in the backfield and the gift to the fullback. And Rush uh, hitting the right guard, trying to get a first down and stop short. He's stacked up around the 46-yard uh, line by Melinda's Bird and uh, a lot of other teammates in that Tech defense. It's going to bring on third down. They'll need about two yards to go. Frank Beamer, he's one of the first uh, graduates of Virginia Tech to come back and coach his alma mater in quite a long while. And he's gotten off to a good start here in his first three or four years. Third down, a long two. Big play for South Carolina. They pitch it back. Uh, and the tailback hitting down in there. Looks like Mike Dingle was back in the lineup. And Dingle gets it close to a first down. Damian Russell came up from safety to help out on the stop. It is Dingle. Mike Dingle's going to have to play some football today, Jim. He's going to have to run hard. He stuck it in there nicely. Again, Melendez Bird right there to wrap him up. They've, these linebackers that Virginia Tech have are headhunters. South Carolina's offensive line is going to have to do an excellent job to control them. Well, it's the first down of the Gamecock, so their live, uh, the drive continues, has reached down now to the Virginia Tech 34, where it's first and 10. Bobby Fuller already has had success through the air. Here's Fuller back, fakes the bingo on the play. So Fuller's going deep down the middle, caught by the tight end Stewart inside the 10. First and goal for South Carolina. Charles Stewart running a post to pattern from tight end, and Fuller hit him right in the hand. Beautiful pass. Play fake, throws the defense just enough, give Bobby time, drop back. Charles Stewart makes an excellent catch here. Anthony Pack, number five for Virginia Tech, was covering him, but he didn't see the ball in time. And Charles Stewart, good concentration on hanging on to that ball. Well, Pack is one of those interior linebackers that was frozen a little bit by that play action fake. And what a throw, right? Dropped it right past Pack and in the hands of Stewart. First and goal, South Carolina. First down play from the seven. Dingle cuts it back, hits to the five, and is stacked up. Hit by Todd Brown. Makes his uh, 14th tackle that he's had so far. Darwin Herdman came in to help out. Ball just inside the five. A little delayed. Mike tries to bring it back here. Todd Brown does a good job of holding his ground and making the tackle. South Carolina threatening to draw first blood in this game today. By the way, the Gamecocks have a good following here today. About 4,000 fans made the trip up from the Midlands to cheer on the Garland and Black. A slot back to right, two wide receivers. Single setback is Mike Dingle. And here is Fuller looking for the end zone. Fuller's got plenty of time now. Fuller runs up in the pocket, shovels it off. It's fumbled and covered by Virginia Tech. Now they call it forward pass incomplete. 
Where it looked like Archie Hopkins had a recovery, but they rule it a forward shovel pass, which just means it's an incomplete pass, and we'll go back to line of scrimmage, and it'll be third down and goal from inside the five. Good protection by the secondary. Bobby has nobody open. Very risky play, especially here. I think if instant replay was on, they would look at that pretty close, Jim. Well, it's uh, a point of argument for Virginia Tech, but it remains South Carolina's ball, third down and goal from the five. Two wide receivers to the left side. And there's Eddie Miller in the slot, Robert Brooks. Back, Bobby Fuller. Fuller fires it off short underneath the tight end, Stewart. Stewart at the five is taken down for no game by Anthony Pack. They tried to hit the tight end underneath and get Stewart, a great player from Valdosta, Georgia's running room. Jimmy Whitten was putting the pressure on Bobby Fuller. I think now we'll see Colin Mackey. Well, he's one of the best around. <laughs> School holds the school record for scoring. Colin Mackey comes in. The field goal try will be about 22 yards from the 12. A sharp angle from the hash mark on the left side. Mackey trying a low snap. The kick is in the air, though, and it is no good. Mackey misses. Breaks quite a straight for him from that distance. And so remains scoreless here and will return with more after these messages from your local station. This is Sportsnet. Virginia Tech's been able to hold off South Carolina in its first threat when Colin Mackey missed the field goal try. Max, could the bad snap have a big effect on that? Well, I think the wet conditions also had something to do with the bad snap. The holder had a tough time getting the ball down, and it threw Colin off just enough. Pro set for Tech, and Fira back in the pocket. Fira throw batted down again. That was batted down by number 93, Pat Blackwell. A 270-pound senior from Ladson, South Carolina, got one big hand on it and swatted it down. There's Blackwell right in the middle of your screen, number 93. Well, when Will Fuhrer drops back here, sets and turns around, all he sees is Patrick Blackwell right in his face. Excellent push by deep Carolina's defensive line, and they're going to need that today to keep him off balance. Second and ten, back to the eye formation. The tailback is Vaughn Hebron. And the give is... To Kennedy, Tony Kennedy out of the backfield. Kennedy tripped up by uh, Leon Harris of free safety. Picks up a couple of yards to the 22, and so it is third and eight for Virginia Tech. South Carolina defense has been very stout so far halfway through the first quarter. No score with five and a half minutes to go to the end of the first period. Virginia Tech trying to run a lot of play action to keep South Carolina's linebackers in defensive front at bay, and it's so far it's worked pretty well. Tony Kennedy is now the tailback for Virginia Tech. And here's Fuhrer back in the pocket, fires a long one downfield, incomplete. That was intended for Cullen, Nick Cullen, and covering Stacy Robinson for South Carolina, along with Leon Harris. So it brings up fourth down, and Chris Bosch comes on the field to punt for Virginia Tech. Bosch stands back inside. He'll kick him about the 10. Single safety is uh, George Rush, a senior from Goose Creek. For South Carolina, here's a wobbly spiral field going to hit in front of the rush and going to hit toward the sidelines and out of bounds around the South Carolina 40. And that's where the Gamecocks will have it first and 10 when we come back with no score in Blacksburg between South Carolina and Virginia Tech. South Carolina takes on for the second time today, first and 10 at its own 39 yard line. Bobby Fuller retreating into the pocket. Fuller hangs in there. Fuller being charged and now dropped for the sack by Todd Brown. A second string in. He's playing behind Al Chambly. He's a substitute. And he dropped Fuller the first sack of the day after a long, long wait by Bobby. Excellent protection by the Tech secondary. Bobby looks, looks, nobody to throw to. Finally pulls it down, gets ready to run. Todd Brown brings him down for the sack. Well, Fuller will be the first one to tell you he's not going to hurt you with his running. He can do a little scrambling back there to stay alive, but he's no threat to run. But they might, might need that today, Jim. Well, then maybe they will. Second and 10 on the 34. Fuller looks over the defense. Fuller backs up again to throw. Fires off the flat to Brooks. He can't hold it on the 40. Robert Brooks hit right in the numbers. We're probably looking over his shoulder to see who was coming at him. 
and could not hold on to the football. Incomplete pass, and it's third down and 10. Just sent Robert in motion to sort of isolate him on Scott Rice. Robert had, I mean, Robert had this problem two weeks ago against North Carolina, taking his eye off the ball a little bit. It's a good ball by Bobby Fuller. The ball should have been caught. Well, he could hear the footsteps of Rice, probably. Third down and 10 now for South Carolina. They have stalled so far on this possession. And there's a bad snap, and Fuller just dropped to his knee, and a penalty flag is thrown. Let's see if we get a dead ball foul here. This could be a legal procedure. And it could be an automatic penalty against South Carolina. They may get another third down play. Sparky Woods in his second season as head coach of the Gamecocks. I don't think he's too pleased with we what he's no seeing flag. on offense right now. The play stands. It is fourth down. Okay. Fourth no down. flag. And this is going to bring out uh, Darren Parker. And Darren's going to need a good punt here because they're back in South Carolina territory on the 34 yard line. Marcus Michael and Bo Campbell are the two men who usually go deep for Virginia Tech. Jim I can't quite understand what happened. Uh, Bobby Fuller changed his cadence. Tech's defense jumped off sides. Well there's still Hal no punter on the field for South Carolina. That's why I don't think they know that it's first down. Hal Hamrick snapped the ball. Bobby Fuller hit a knee instead of going ahead and running a play. If he would have gone ahead and run the play they might have called the offsides. But he didn't. He hit a knee, and so the ball was dead right there. Well, finally, here comes the punting unit on now for the Gamecocks. Darren Parker will be back inside his 20 when he gets this snap. He'll kick the ball in about the 22. Single safety for Virginia Tech, which means they're sending 10 men. That's Marcus Michael, who can literally fly. Tech looks like they might try to get in there to try to block this punt. Darren Parker waiting. Good snap, low one, but he gets it away. Kicking away from Michael. Michael retreats, takes on the 21. They've got a nice wall set up, Jim. <laughs> Sidelines, and good play by Joe Reeves. Reeves gets over there to finally get Michael out of bounds before he can reach midfield. It'll be around the 45-yard line. Not the kind of punt Darren Parker wanted. Tech had a nice wall set up for Marcus Mickle, and he got a real good return off of it. We have three minutes, 39 seconds to go in the uh, first period, and we have a timeout with no score, and we'll return with more after these messages from your local station. This is Sportsnet. With his best field position of the day, and the handoff in the backfield to Hebron, and he's pulled down for loss by Kurt Wilson. Boy, Wilson got great penetration on that play. That's what they're going to need today. They're, good. they're still running a lot of the play fake. Did a good job of getting penetration and bringing Hebron down for a two-yard loss. Hebron is the uh, tailback. And now Virginia Tech, though, he scored 23 first quarter points so far. Here's sideline pattern. Hit over here to Bo Campbell. He's hit immediately by Stacy Robinson and driven out of bounds. That'll be a short gain, five or six yards, but he gets the ball over into South Carolina territory for the first time today by Virginia Tech. They Bo spotted on the 48. Bo Campbell is their big play man. He's averaging about 17 yards per catch. He made this catch. Stacy Robinson really put a hit on him after the catch. All right, Hebron is the tailback. Phil Bryant at fullback. And here's the play action by Fuhrer. Sideline pass, and he hits his fullback Bryant, and Bryant takes it down the sidelines for a first down. Inside the 35 of South Carolina, Leon Harris back. This is the deepest penetration so far by the Hokies. Patrick Hinton and Leon Harris hadn't have been there. It might have been a tech long gone one here for Bryant. Good play action again. Tech doesn't hesitate to throw to the running backs. These guys are averaging about 18, 20 yards per catch. Bill Bryant does a good job of catching and running with the ball there. Bo Campbell comes back in, so it's Campbell and Marcus Michael both wide to the right, the two speedy wide receivers. Fuhrer hands off this time to Michael hitting to the weak side, and Michael is pulled down as he crossed the line of scrimmage by Marty Dye with help in there by number 89, Troy Duke, who's giving Corey Miller a little bit of a breather. Now Miller comes back in. As some more changes are made in the backfield for South Carolina. Defensive coordinator Rick Witt. 
getting his frontline troops back in there. Will Fuhrer at the South Carolina 31, second and seven. Fires a pass incomplete. Throw it behind Michael, who was trying to run a little bit of a flag post pattern and being covered back there by Antonio Walker. Incomplete pass, but Fuhrer just threw a bad pass that time. Well, I don't know if uh, Michael was supposed to zig when he zagged. Uh, Will Fury was was looking for him to run an out to the flag. Instead, he ran a post incomplete pass. Well, Tolbert uh, was coming on a blitz from his outside linebacking post, and that might have had a little effect on Fuhrer. There's Fuhrer, third and seven now for Will Fuhrer, sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland. Michael in motion. Fuhrer on the draw gets his fullback Bryant. Bryant breaks a tackle and gets inside the 25. And drives it down to the 22, and that may that will be a first down, I'm sure, for Virginia Tech. Mike Landry on the stop for South Carolina. Mike Tolbert comes back in the defense now for the Kurt Wilson, Marty Dye, Corey Miller. These defensive linemen, they're really the, with the play action. They're really being confused by it. They're taking off after the quarterback. They're running the delayed draw. Good yardage, good gain for Phil Bryant. Fuhrer are now beginning to smell the goal line here down on the 22 first down gives to Hebron a good hole off right guard good second effort and then he is really jolted by Corey Miller and driven by Marty Dine Corey Miller for the South Carolina defense but I think his penetration will be down somewhere around the 16 yard line they put it on the 17 again delayed draw <laughs> Fuhrer drops back like he's going to pass. Good blocking by the tech, uh, tech offensive line. Corey Miller can't hang on to him. Leon Harris shows you right there why he's the leading tackler for South Carolina. He put a stick on him. All right, it's second down and five. A gift to Bright, the fullback, looking for a hole. Doesn't find one. Instead, he finds an arm roll of white jersey Gamecocks with Mike Tolbert in the middle. And they put him down. Corey Miller was also in on that stop. They mark it just inside the 15. So at the 14 yard line, it's going to be third down and about two. Jim, with the quickness of South Carolina's defensive front, Tech's offensive line looks like they're just cutting their legs out from under them and just giving the running backs enough time to split the scene. Big play here for Virginia Tech and for the South Carolina defense. They fake the pitch, give the fullback right inside, touchdown. Penalty flag is down. Bryant great makes the end zone, but a yellow flag is down at the line of scrimmage, and they're going to call holding against Virginia Tech. That touchdown will be nullified. Well, you can hear the disappointed O's and O's running through this partisan crowd of about 40,000. But it's uh, quite a break for the Gamecocks. We have holding Virginia Tech. We'll replay third down. It'll still be third down, but now it's going to be third and 12. Good deceptive play. Faced the fake the toss. Took gave the dive to Phil Bryant. A huge hole in there. Huge hole. Phil Bryant takes it into the end zone, but for no good. Well, you can't stop Bryant with arm tackles, as you saw on that play. He's one of the seven players out of Damatha High School in Hyattsville. North Carolina defense number three in the nation behind Iowa and North Carolina State. Here's a spread offense now. Formation for Tech. Fuhrer back in the pocket. Fires off the side to Hebron. Hebron to the 10, to the 5, and he breaks it for a touchdown. Virginia Tech strikes through the air. 22 yards. Fuhrer to Hebron. Fuhrer threw a good strike here. Hit Hebron quick. Broke three or four tackles. You can't arm tackle Von Hebron. Guys averaging 100 yards a game, about 20 yards per catch. The man's a complete ball player, and he proved it there. Mickey Thomas in to try for the point after. Sophomore from nearby Dublin, Virginia, and he splits the uprights. And Virginia Tech has put South Carolina down by seven points here with 27 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Virginia Tech breaks on top. That drive went about 56 yards. 55 yards, and it took uh, three minutes and 12 seconds on the drive. Again, good blocking by Tech's offensive line. Three-step drop hits Von Hebron quick. Actually, they were they were playing a deep zone. Von Hebron just ran a straight seam route. 
Will Furrier read it very well, hit him with a strike. Von Hebron breaks about three tackles and gets into the end zone. Well, he's a great back. There's one, two, there's three tackles he runs through. You've got to wrap that young man up. Very powerful. South Carolina sending Robert Brooks back deep to receive the kickoff. There's a scoring summary. Nine plays for the 55 yards, three minutes, 12 seconds, and the pass to Hebron for the touchdown. Jim McKechnie, a sophomore from Grafton, Virginia, will be in the kickoff. He averages putting the ball to the 11-yard line. Robert Brooks is back about the five. Eddie Miller is to his right around the 10-yard line. And over on the left looks like Frank Adams. Jim, with, with, the, with Tech's defense, as tough as it is, South Carolina having trouble moving the ball, this is where South Carolina can really make up some yardage out on that field. Their special teams play is going to have to excel. They're going to have to really get some good returns. And I think this is what Sparky's going to be looking for. McKechnie with a kickoff. It's going to come down to Brooks at the 14. Heading for the right sideline, looking for a wall of blockers. Cuts behind one block and is hit down at the 30. A penalty flag is down. I believe Virginia Tech was offsides on the kick. If so, the game coach can ask him to kick it again from the 30-yard line. But it appeared that before McKechnie got to the ball, one of the Tech linemen had crossed the line, the 35-yard line. Offside. The receiving team encroach. We'll replay the down, re-kick from the 35. Okay, so it was offsetting penalties. There'll be no walk-off here. Just another kick from the 35-yard line by Jim McKechnie. And retreating deep again are the trio of Robert Brooks, Eddie Miller, and Frank Adams. That time, Tech didn't hesitate to kick the ball to Brooks, who's the most dangerous of that trio back there for South Carolina. Kicking the right hash mark, which Tech always does. They had to hold the ball a moment ago because the wind was blowing it from the kicking tee. McKechnie, who is a soccer-style kicker, there's Brooks, waiting this time at the 15. Not expecting a long kick. McKechnie, only one time this year, has reached the end zone. Here's the kick, not too long. Brooks waiting at the 14 again, same spot. Heads to the left side, looking for daylight. Goes down the sideline, 40, 45, and hit out of bounds. And that's going to give South Carolina a much better field position. They'll take over on their 47, first and 10. Good return, good blocking up front. Tech, when they put the ball on the right hash, they only put three players on the on the outside of the right hash so South Carolina just brought the ball right up the sideline where they only had the three players they had four or five players blocking on three he got a good return off of it Bobby Fuller's out there again he has Carl Platt at one rece wide receiver spot George Rush is set out on the spot on the right side double tight in it appears from here and Fuller set to go on first down the 47. Here comes Fuller. Hands off to Dink. Swinging wide. Trying to cut by hit the 50 down to the Tech 48. Picks up about four. Melinda's Bird, a sophomore linebacker from Hampton, Virginia, on the stop for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech leads it here, and that should be the last play of the first quarter. So at the end of the first quarter, it is Virginia Tech 7, South Carolina nothing, and we'll return with four after these messages from your local station. And then we'll be back to start the second quarter from Lane Stadium in Blacksburg. This is Sportsnet. Quarter will start South Carolina at the Virginia Tech 49, second down and six to go. Still with two tight ends in there. And it could be that Art Wilkinson and Sparky Wood decided to run it a little bit. Up the middle, they send their big tailback, Mike Dingle. Doesn't get a lot this time. Stacked up around the 47. Maybe a couple. Brian Gump, Campbell. Boy, that Tech defense really gives grudgingly. Tech's defensive line just closing down all the holes. They're running a lot of slants where the offensive line, they, they feel like they're filling the hole. Tech's slanting down on every play. I think that's why the two tight end formation, Jim, so they can try and get outside a little bit, work with Mike Dingle's speed. Now only one setback and two wide receivers with uh, double tight end for South Carolina. It's third down and four from the 47. Fuller in the pocket. Fires down the right side. Incomplete intended for Eddie Miller. Covered by Greg Lester, a right sophomore cornerback. Good pressure from Jimmy Whitney again from the end spot. 
and it's fourth down. And back on the field will come Darren Parker for South Carolina. The Gamecocks unable to generate any sustained offense here against the Virginia Tech defense. Tech leads it seven to nothing. Tech sends Marcus Michael back as a single safety. They got ten men up close to the line of scrimmage. There's Michael back all by his lonesome, and Parker standing on his forty. He kicked this ball from about the forty-three. Into a pretty stiff breeze, Jim. Pretty good wind blowing, kind of quartering against him right here, blowing left to right. He kicks it away into the wind, low one, grabbed by Michael inside the 15. Michael back over the 25 and then pulled down from behind around the 27 yard line. Stop made by Leroy Cheater. About a 10, 10 to 12 mile an hour win, and as you see, this is what it can do to, to the kicking game. The wind just took the ball right out, right out of line from where Darren Parker had dropped it. Didn't get a very good punt off of it. As you see here, watch what the wind does to the ball. It just turns it sideways. Darren can't get a good foot on it. Takes a nice hop for Michael. Picks it up, and he sees. you see the seam that he hit. Here's the pitch to Tony Kennedy on the pitch sweep. Tries to get outside, and he is hit down as he crosses the 30. Gets a short game. Joe Reeves makes the stop. Corey Miller was coming hard from the backside with pressure. And they spot it on the 32. There's the first quarter statistics. As you can see, Virginia Tech outrushing uh, South Carolina better than two to one, and total offense 93 to 59. Second down play for Fuhr. Play action. Fuhr in the pocket, left hander hit from behind. Hit his tight end, who is cracked down immediately by Joe Reeves. The catch was made by Greg Daniels coming underneath. And Fuhrer got rid of that ball just in the nick of time. Cedric Bembry was really coming with a full head of steam. Will Fuhrer, again, play action, trying to freeze the linebackers. Sets Corey Miller comes in. Greg Daniels makes a good catch, hangs on to the football. Third down and three for Tech. And here's the misdirection and rollout. Left side Fuhrer throws on the run. Caught by Campbell at the 46. Campbell still on his feet down to South Carolina 37. A great throw and a fine catch by Bo Campbell, number 11, has given Virginia Tech new life for the first down in South Carolina territory. And Leon Harris is the bad last man there, or Campbell would have been off to the races. Again, play action rollout. He rolls to his left. He's a left-handed quarterback, so he's going to throw better to it, rolling to his left. I think Campbell almost had a knee on the ground when he caught that ball. That was very close in keeping that ball alive. First down play, and the give is to Tony Ken Kennedy. And Kennedy is straightened up right at the 35 by Patrick Hinton and pounded back hard with Marty Dye hitting him low. Forward motion, a couple of yards to the 35, and it is second down and eight. Virginia Tech doing a variety of things, Jim, with the play action, the rollouts, hitting the dive, really confusing South Carolina's defense. They're going to have to hold their ground a little better, I think, to really, really control that play action. Tech comes back with Hebron in the lineup. He's now playing the slot back. Here's the play. While well, they give it off uh, to the fullback, and Bryant coming back to his right. Stop short of the 30 by Mike Tolbert. Just a little counter. Here it takes a handoff. Phil Bryant tries to deceive a little bit. Come, comes back to the right. Makes a good game. It is third and five, Virginia Tech. At the South Carolina 32 and a half. Four wide receivers. And Hebron is back in the pocket. Throws quickly to Michael at the 25 down the sidelines and gets the first down inside the 20. Mike Tober takes him out of bounds. But the quick Michael, once he gets his hands on the ball, just made that on his own to get the first down. Just a quick three-step drop. Michael takes five, runs a, a five-yard turnaround. Referia takes the three-step drop, hits him on the spot. Antonio Walker really given a lot of ground there. He's got to be conscious of Michael's speed. Pro set this time, and here is Fury rolling to the right and firing incomplete. Too low down there for Marcus Michael, who pounds the earth in self-disgust. But it's incomplete pass, and it'll be uh, second down. Again, Marcus Michael running an in. Stacy Robinson on him pretty tight. 
he's reading the quarterback a little bit instead of reading the the receiver he's trying to read Will Furrier's eyes and he broke out pass really wide and catchable it hit the ground before it got to him both Sanders and Michael now are to the left side both wide receivers and Fuhrer retreats in the pocket Fuhrer with good protection fires over the middle batted down by Hinton and a flag is down a tight end Daniels the intended receiver and they say that Hinton made contact before he blocked the pass well this is the way the coaches teach it they teach to use the the inside arm or the front arm to bat the ball down keep that back arm to hang on to him. Well, Patrick Hinton hung on to him a little bit early and a little too long. This drive started back on the 28-yard line for Virginia Tech, and let's see, the penalty's going to take the ball down inside the South Carolina 15th. A little isolation on Patrick Hinton. Yeah, he, he definitely had a hold of his jersey. Made a good play on the ball. Automatic first down. Well, it's half the distance. It'll be an automatic first down for Virginia Tech. And the ball is at the nine, so it means it'll be first and goal. So Tech's going to have four cracks here at getting into the South Carolina end zone again. They send uh, Mike Sturdivant wide to the left side. To the right is Bo Campbell. Close set in the backfield. And up the middle comes the fullback Bryant, and he fights for good yardage to the five-yard line. Phil Bryant, who's a tough little junior, 205 pounds, Hit down well, by Corey Miller. Just a straight dive. Phil Bryant doing a lot of spinning and turning. South Carolina's linebackers and defensive line are going to really have to put a helmet on him. They're going to have to wrap their arms around him to stop those legs from turning. This is where South Carolina's defense excels. Double tight end now for Virginia Tech. Fake pitch. Give inside to Bryant. Bryant hits to about the two, and he's backed up there. A couple of yards short of the goal line. Kurt Wilson, the first man to hit uh, Phil Bryant, number 29. But Bryant has shared the rushing glory here in the first half with Vaughn Hebron and Tony Kennedy. He's Phil, doing a lot more than just blocking. Phil Bryant has given every run, every rush attempt, he's given that little extra burst that's gotten him the two or three yards. They're going to have to stop him right here, stop him at the line of scrimmage. All right, third and goal, and here's Fuhrer back, and he fires touchdown to Bryant. Great fake by Fuhrer, and he's got his second touchdown pass of the day. Both of them to Phil Bryant. Or no, the other was to Hebron. Stacy Robinson made the hit, but too late. And Tech goes up 13. A little delay, short rollout. Corey Miller right in his face. Fury makes an excellent pass to Phil Bryant. Touchdown. Corey Miller was just a, a half a step away from having a sack there instead of allowing the touchdown. The Fury hung tough in the pocket, made a good strike. Well, uh, Fuhrer threw 22 yards to Hebron in the first quarter, and now three yards here to Bryant. And the snap and the battle, he gets a kick up and away and good. And Tech now goes up 14-0. And this is the best offensive showing against South Carolina for the season. Ten minutes to go in the first half, and South Carolina finds itself down 14-0. We'll return with more football after these messages from your local station. This is Sportsnet. Ten minutes, two seconds remaining in the first half. Virginia Tech has its second touchdown, both on passes by Will Fuhrer here in the first half to lead the Gamecocks. Again, they have to hold the ball with the win and the kick downfield. And it's uh, taken by Patrick Hinton, one of the Hitman, uh, at the 35. And going over the 30 is number 40, Ernest Dixon. Normally plays on the defensive end, was in there for the special teams for blocking, but that ball never got back to the fast guys. And so Dixon runs it back to the 35, where it is Gamecocks ball first and 10. Robert Davis was the man who made the hit for Virginia Tech. That time, Tech went 73 yards in 11 plays in less than three minutes, with uh, Fuhrer passing to Phil Bryant for the touchdown from the three. Bobby Fuller back out for South Carolina. Has not been able to get his one aerial attack really off the ground so far. Here's Fuller in the pocket. Going deep down the middle and he's hit his man. Caught over the 50 and down the 45. Carl Borden on the stop hitting Robert Brooks, who makes a nice uh, run that time running a little post pass. This is what the Gamecocks going to have to do. Open it up a little bit. Deep Tech shut down their running game. Bobby takes a shot after he releases the ball, but he hangs in tough. Hits a wide open Robert Brooks. They're going to have to isolate on Robert a little bit more. Try to get him open. 
for some of those long gains. Well, there's Brooke coming out in the slot. A junior from Greenwood. The wide receiver is Eddie Miller. He's out of your picture at the bottom of the screen. And here comes uh, Fuller handing off and coming wide and running out of bounds is Terry Wilbur, a freshman uh, running back. They think he has a great future at South Carolina. Tremendously fast. He was the state high school sprint champion in the 100 meters. And it played briefly in the opening game against Duke was in for just that one play. Damian Russell welcomed him to big time college football with this hit on the sideline. Good run, but he stuck his head in there. And Russell put it on him. Pick up a five, though, and it's still, it'll be second down and five for South Carolina. Here comes Brooks in motion back to his own backfield. And Fuller hands off and Rob DeBoer on a slant to the left side is stopped by Rusty Pendleton at about the 35 in tech territory and so it'll be another third down play facing uh, Rob Bobby DeBoer Ford. with a little off tackle offensive line seems to be getting a better feel for what Tech's defensive lines doing the way they're slanting to close the gaps got a good gain on that Fuller's 0 for 3 in third down conversion Dingle returns to the backfield now as a tailback the fullback Leroy Jeter and the power eye formation Look for Dingle to go right up the middle, and there he goes for the first down. He's got it. Dingle plunges down close to the 20 to the 32, and that should be a first down. Well, there's a Gamecock fan. Made the nice drive up I-77. Mike Dingle just good blocking by the fullbacks. Good blocking by the offensive line. Good surge. Got him the first down. Mike Dingle's going to have to be used a little bit more today, I think, Jim. They're going to have to get him in there, let him be the workhorse that they, they feel he can be because they're going to need his power. Max, the way this game's going, they're going to have to use everybody. Balls at the 33 of Virginia Tech, South Carolina, first and 10. And off again to Dingle, going to his right. Dingle hit at the 30 and drives on forward with his 248 pounds. And it was finally Russell Pendleton who called a halt to the whole thing around the 27th. Damian Russell in for an assist. So you get Mike in there, let him get a feel for what's going on with the game. They keep alternating, substituting the running backs, and he really can't get a feel for what's going on. Let him get in there, let him get loosened up, warmed up, and I think you'll see some big plays from him. That was a pickup of six. Dingle now has 21 yards so far. It's second down and four. It's been a very good looking drive for South Carolina to get back in. Dingle up the middle, cracks through for the first down to the 20. Boy, Dingle running with power that time, hit the middle, found the crease, and took it to the 20-yard line. Roger Garland in the second and making the stop. Good blocking by Hal Hamrick and Jay Killen. They open up a nice hole. Mike hits it in, uh, up in there hard, and that's what they want to see, how they want to see him running. They want to see him lowering those shoulders, not running as straight up as he likes to sometimes, and really surging for that extra yard. Virginia Tech gets some fresh defensive players in, giving Chambly a rest on this play. It's first down for South Carolina at the Virginia Tech 20. Fuller is back in the pocket. Good protection, full of fires, and it is caught by the tight end inside the 15-yard line. Archie Hopkins made the stop, but a nice grab down there by Mike Whitman. Good protection by the offensive line. Good Excuse me. Good, uh, good uh, coverage in the secondary. Bobby sits back. Let's Charles Stewart find the open spot and hits him. Excuse me, Max. That was a catch with by Charles Stewart, who's a tight end. And it's a gain of nine. It'll be second down and one at the Tech 11. And this is South Carolina coming back with another golden opportunity. They had a deep one for Mr. Fieldwell. Bobby Fuller on a long count. Fuller comes out, has to dig, cuts it back, and cuts inside the 10 for a first down. Melinda's bird tripped up. Big Mike Dingle, but the game cocktail back drives it inside the 10 for another first down. Tech closed the hole going to the left. Mike cuts it back real well to the right. Lunges for the first down. They've got a good drive going here, Jimmy. They were down on the five yard line, second and five last time. Really had some some plays that didn't didn't work quite as well. They didn't get in the end zone. They missed the field goal. They've got to capitalize on this. Ken Watson's now in there at fullback for his blocking with Dingle. And here's the give to Dingle. Watson from Dingle cuts it back, going for the five, and that's about where he'll get. Dingle stopped on the five by Jimmy Whitten, their all-star defensive end. 
That's the eighth first down today by South Carolina compared to six for Virginia Good Tech. block, good kick out block right there by Ken Watson on Archie Hopkins. Dingle hits it up in there, but they close down on him pretty quick. They need a touchdown here, Jim. They, they can't afford to settle for a field goal when they've got second and five on the five. Art Fuller sends Miller to the right and uh, Robert Brooks down to the left and McCoy likes to go to the corner to Brooks. It is second down and they give us to Dingle, cuts back behind the block, hits to the five and ridden down by a host of tackles led by Anthony Pack. And now the Tech defense suddenly is reared up here as the ball gets down in the shell of the goalpost and they are driving the Gamecocks back. Al Chambly was out for a play to rest, makes this stop. Same play to the right that they went, ran to the left just a little while. Good kick out block by Ken Watson. But Mike Dingle, Dingle is hit head on by Anthony Pack and a host of Virginia Tech players. Here's a very big play. Third down and goal. South Carolina at the Tech four and a half yard line. And Tech pass for a timeout. So Tech asked for a timeout here to regather its uh, defensive forces. Uh, South Carolina has a golden opportunity to score here. They're down 14 to nothing. 4.50 to go in the first half. And we'll be back for the third down play. Bush River Road and I-20. As we come back, a penalty flag is thrown on Virginia Tech on the third down pass that was batted down at the goal line. The Tech fans have begun a big roar, but then came the yellow flag. And it looks like it could be interference against the Hokies. And this is going to give uh, South Carolina new life. It means a first down inside the five. Let's listen to the referee. Yeah, Terry holding Mike. an eligible receiver against Virginia Tech. It'll be an automatic first down, half the distance from the goal penalty. Not interference, but it's just as good. Hold the held a receiver. Bobby is forcing this ball a little bit. Got away with the penalty there. Really helped the Gamecocks out. And now here comes some fresh new troops into the front line for Virginia Tech. As Frank Beamer tries to shore up his uh, defense here to keep South Carolina out of the goal, out of the end zone. Gamecocks first and goal at about the two and a half yard line. Tailback is Dingle. He's been the workhorse in this drive. Fuller, fullback, and Watson crams into the middle and then is stacked up short of the goal line. Or rather, Jeter. It was Leroy Jeter, the ball carrier. As Fuller tried to get him use uh, Dingle as a decoy Just that time going wide and tried to slip Jeter up the middle but Melinda's bird was not fooled he made the stop at about the pickup of a yard though so it is second down and goal at the one and a half they're running at the toughest part of that Virginia Tech defense right in that middle that wide tackle six is really bottling everything up Al Tech's going to call another timeout so Virginia Tech uses its second timeout here in this series of downs Frank Beamer Looks like he's really upset down there. He's on the headphones with the guys upstairs. We hope you'll join us for our next telecast in two weeks as the Gamecocks entertain East Carolina's Pirates live from williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia. That'll be Saturday, October 13th at high noon. So we hope you'll join us for that game. One, one week ago, Virginia Tech was able to beat East Carolina by only one point. Other scores, NC State leading at Maryland 6-3 in a big game in the ACC. Virginia has had it all its way so far today against Duke down in Durham, 17-0 in the second quarter. In the second quarter, Michigan 21-0 over UCLA, so the Wolverines coming back from that loss to Notre Dame and looking sharp today. We'll keep you posting other scores throughout the afternoon. Right here, South Carolina's got its best chance to score. They were down there once before on the five yard line, and Tech held them, and they had to try for a field goal and missed. And now it's second down. They've got a yard and a half to go. They're in the power eye formation. In this formation, they like to give the ball to tailback Dingle and have him go behind the blockers and just jump over the line. They give it instead to the fullback, and he doesn't make it. Or rather, it's Rob DeBoer. He is driven back. The boy hit by Bird again and pounded back hard. So this Tech defense in the trenches well, today has been tough. They ha they have held their ground well. They're gaining inches when they need a couple of yards. Rob DeBoer hits it in there hard. 
Tech's defense shuts down the surge of the offensive line for South Carolina for no gain. Two plays have gained two yards. It's now third and goal from the half yard line. They need 18 inches here to get to the goal line. Power eye. Dingle over the top. He's touched down. Dingle broke the plane, even though it was hit near the line of scrimmage. Dingle crosses the goal line, and South Carolina has scored with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Well, Melendez Bird came up and hit Dingle right when he made the jump. It was a great play. <laughs> But he still got in the end zone. Mike Dingle, we've got to have, he's got to have more of this to us. Colin Mackey never, that end zone. never missed a point after touchdown. He's 92 for 92. There's a good snap, and the kick is true and through. And so Mackey makes it 93, and the string continues to run here with three and a half to go in the first half. South Carolina has scored. It is now Virginia Tech 14, South Carolina 7, and we'll return with more after these messages from your local station. This is Sportsnet. Marcus Michael and John Jeffries are deep for the kickoff. Jefferson got inside the 10 to 20. He is really jolted and taken down hard. The hit was made by number 42 for the Gamecocks, and that's Leroy Jeter, who plays about every position you ask him to. Eric Brown came in and really made a good blindside hit. And they're gonna and they're gonna need that. There's the scoring drive, 65 yards. Dingle did most of the damage for South Carolina. Well, the South Carolina defense has been off the field for a long time. They've had a lot of rest. Well, hopefully they'll, they needed the rest. They'd been on the field for quite a while because the offense couldn't generate anything. Hopefully they'll be able to come up with some big plays. Fuhrer backing up. Fuhrer fires over the middle. It is caught by Cullen over the 30. Completed pass for a first down. Mike Lander made the stop about a 12-yard catch by Nick Cullen. A split in. And before Reeves could get to him, he had a first down the 33. South Carolina's just not getting enough heat on Will Fuhrer. Has uh, plenty of time to sit back. Nick Cullen finds the opening in the zone right behind the linebackers. Good catch for first down. This time it's a handoff to Hebron. Hebron trying to cut it back on a change of direction and runs into nothing but trouble. And in the name of Mike Tolbert, number 87, and Pat Blackwell. Those two Gamecocks make the stop right on the 35. So it'll be second down and eight at the 35-yard line for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech lost a heartbreaker to Maryland to open their season. Defeated Bowling Green, then beat East Carolina last week. North South Carolina's defeated Duke and North Carolina so far. Here is a fake play accident. Fuhrer fires it. Complete to Cullen, who's wide open over the 50. And he takes into South Carolina territory before... Cedric Surratt can stop him at the 47. Another fine pass completion from Will Fuhrer. To Will Fuhrer receiver. is doing an excellent job of faking, and it's really throwing the defensive line off. It's throwing the secondary off. They can't. They don't know whether to go to the quarterback or stay on the receiver. And Cedric Surratt that time was just turned around. Well, here's Fuhrer with a new first down. Backpedaling, fires off in the flats, dropped by Hebron. Dropped at the 50-yard line, incomplete pass. It'll be second and 10 at the South Carolina 47. The score, Virginia Tech 14, South Carolina 7. Just another wrinkle in uh, Virginia Tech's offensive game plan. A little screen to the fullback. No reason that ball should have been dropped. He could have had a substantial gain with that one. That's about the first ball they dropped today. Well, made a mistake. He hit him in the hands. <laughs> Now it's a two-minute drill here for Fuhrer. Two minutes, three seconds to go in the first half. Two wide receivers to the left and a slot back out there. That is uh, Hebron. One setback. Here comes Sturdivant in motion. And the give is to the fullback. And Bryant runs into a whole wall of players from South Carolina around the uh, 46. Gerald Dixon was the first man to greet him, and then Mike Tolbert helped out. Will Fuhrer is doing such a good job of carrying out the fakes whether it's a, a live fake or not. He is going all the way around the end so that Corey Miller has to hold his ground for the bootleg or anything else that might develop. Definitely a passing situation here on third down and long, and Fuhrer's back in the pocket, being chased by fires it downfield. It's broken up. Beautiful defensive play down there by Mike Landry, an inside linebacker. 
The ball was intended for the tight end, Greg Daniels. Got good pressure on Fuhrer that time. Put good heat on him. He laid this ball up. He saw an opening. Thought he could get it to Tony Kennedy, but Mike Landry jumped up and deflected the ball. So it's fourth down and end of punt now is Chris Bosha. Double safety for South Carolina. They kick it to the right side. Fire catch signal, and they let it bound into the end zone for the touchback. So with a minute 15 to go, South Carolina will be 80 yards away as the ball comes out to the 20 on the touchback. First and 10. Bobby Fuller brings his uh, gang back on the field. He'll have Mike Dingle in the backfield. Eddie Miller will be one wide receiver. And also in the backfield will be George Rush running the fullback or the H-back in the South Carolina scheme. Good stand by the defense of South Carolina that time. Gave up a little bit of ground, but they really, really did a good job coming up on the third down when they needed it. Made Virginia Tech punt. Now South Carolina's two-minute offense ought to take shape. All right, Brooks to the right, Miller to the left for Fuller. Look for Fuller to go to the air here with time running out in the first half. Fuller's back. Fuller drills the ball complete. Call over there by Rush at the 25. And he makes it upfield a couple of three yards before Damian Russell catches up with him. And the all-star safety makes the stop on the 28. So it's a pickup of eight through the air for uh, Fuller. And it'll be second down and two. Good protection by the offensive line. Bobby Fuller hits Rush just with a quick turn in. Gets a substantial gain off of it. South Carolina loses, uses one of his three timeouts right here to stop the clock for the minute five to go. The Gamecocks will have two timeouts left to call. Virginia Tech has one. Remember, Tech used those two timeouts down there on the defensive stand. There's Fuller's numbers today. Six out of nine for 76 yards. Jim, this would be a good time to, to get a first down right here with another quick, quick pass and then possibly go for the bomb. Take a shot at it. You've got a minute left. You've got to take a couple of shots at that end zone. But they need to work the ball down the field just a little bit. But I think if they got a first down here off another quick pass, then they could let one out to Robert Brooks, possibly catch him off guard. Well, I'd like to at least get the ball down across the middle and in, in position for Colin Mack to have a shot at a field goal at the very least. One minute, five seconds to go. There's some of the game uh, followers. Like the pet band members are here. 4,000 was the estimated count of um, South Carolina fans who made the trip to Blacksburg for the game. Fuller now, two wide receivers and a slot back. One single running back is Dingle. Four man rush for Virginia Tech. Fuller's back. Fuller gets good protection, fires over the middle, incomplete. He was trying to hit his tight end, Charles Stewart, over the middle crossing pattern, and Rusty Pendleton, the linebacker, that broke it up. That stops the clock with one minute to go. Well, and Rusty third and two. Rusty Pendleton was all over Charles Stewart. I mean, just covering him like a blanket. Bobby's trying to force it in here a little bit, trying to get the first down. It would have had to been a, a superb catch. Rusty Pendleton is a sophomore from Gate City, Virginia, and the Tech coaching staff see a very bright future for him for their defense. Third and two, and Fuller's going to go upstairs on third down. Fuller being chased. Caught behind the line now, fires an incomplete, intended for Rush, and there's a late hit called against Damian Russell. Todd Brown almost sacked Fuller. He fired an incomplete between Rush's legs, and then a late hit by Russell draws the flag against Virginia Tech. Good, good, good defensive pressure, good coverage by the secondary. Bobby has nowhere to go with it. Avoids a nice sack there. Really, really not a, not a smart play by Damian Russell. Gamecocks have to punt out to that play, and he makes he makes a mistake of picking up a personal foul, 15-yard penalty. South Carolina's got the ball on the 42-yard line. First down. That was a costly penalty for Virginia Tech, and it gives South Carolina new life here with 51 seconds yet to go in the second quarter. Gamecocks first down at their own 42. Brooks and Miller, the wide receivers. Dingles, the tailback. Bobby Fuller has... Rush in the slot to the right. Fans still doing that decision, but that's history. Here's Fuller backing up on first down. Fuller in the pocket, going downfield, incomplete. I don't know, he might have been going to rush, or he might have been looking downfield for Brooks. Couldn't tell. The pass didn't even come close to either one of them. All I know is we had, we had three guys in the same area 
Robert Brooks just blew by his man. And I don't know if Bobby, when Bobby slipped, if he was looking that way or not. But we've got a lot of Gamecock receivers in the same vicinity, which I don't really think is uh, is the game plan. Second down and 10 for the Gamecocks on their 42. Now 45 seconds to go in the first half. And Fuller back in the pocket again. Fuller going deep downfield to Miller. Miller is not quite there at the 10. Wow, Miller had the step on him all right, and he had beaten uh, Greg Laster, the cornerback, and was also by the safety, Russell. And Bobby just threw it over his head. Fuller says he doesn't believe he can throw it over Miller's head. <laughs> well, he did that time. <laughs> Eddie Miller had a had a couple of steps on Greg Lassner. Ball was overthrown by about two yards. That would have been a big play for the Gamecocks. I remember the previous play, uh, Max. Miller ran a deep route, so he could have been a little bit winded. I, he could have. I think if he would have gone for that, he would have had a good chance at it. It's third and ten now for the Gamecocks. So now this is a payoff play here to keep this drive going from their own 42. Bobby Fuller's misfired on two passes. Runs the delay to Dingle, and he can't get anything going. And Dingle's taken down for no gain on the 42 by Al Chambly. That's a punting situation now for South Carolina with still 29 seconds to go. Well, well Bobby Tech was unable to connect, leaves the field with 29 seconds to go in the half, and Tech's going to get at least one more shot with the football. Virginia Tech was going to have absolutely nothing to do with that draw, Jim. They were waiting for it, and it didn't even didn't gain them a yard. There's 44-year-old Frank Beamer, played for Virginia Tech here under Jerry Claiborne, was last year Southern Independent College Coach of the Year. Once with an assistant with Art Baker, when Art, uh, who now runs the Gamecock Club, was head coach at the Citadel. So he's got some ties with the guys in Columbia. Darren Parker is in to do the punting for South Carolina, and deep will be Marcus Michael, single safety, number one for Virginia Tech. Again, Darren kicking into a stiff breeze. He's going to need a good punt here. You know, with good this punt. with this win and sun, Max, this field's been getting drier and faster through the whole first half. Well, the second half could be very, very exciting. Parker stands just over his 25. Good snap. Parker gets off the kick. It's a dandy angle for the sideline. Michael is going to watch it go over his head, and it is rolling, rolling, rolling into the end zone. Boy, the Gamecocks have two guys down there, but couldn't quite reach it. It goes over the goal line for a touchback. And so South Carolina or Virginia Tech will start here this series from its 20 with 18 seconds to go. Nice 59 yard punt by Darren Parker. Something the Gamecocks needed right there. They had about 25 seconds to, to give up on the defensive side of it. Needed to give them Virginia Tech as much field to work as possible. And he makes them work 80 yards of that field with 18 seconds. Okay. It really helps the defense out. Will Fuhrer is in the under center of the eye formation. Fuhrer pitches it back to Kennedy. He starts to sweep to the right, tries to cut it back, and is pulled down the 25. Gain of five, which isn't going to do Virginia Tech any good in this situation. Clock's rolling with seven seconds to go, and Tech has no timeouts left, and that'll be the end of the first half. So the first half is over. And South Carolina finds itself down by a touchdown, 14 to 7, to Virginia Tech. And we're expecting John Pritchett to make contact here in just a moment with uh, Frank Beamer. And we'll see how he feels about the Hokies' first half uh, performance against South Carolina, which has been very impressive. We could say that. We could say that. We'll see what Frank says. The teams leave the field now and. Both teams had two great scoring opportunities. Tech made both theirs pay off. And South Carolina missed a field goal on their first drive down and then got it in the end zone the second time. Okay, Frank Beamer is just going off the field. Now let's go to John Pritchett. All right, Coach Beamer joins us at halftime. Coach Beamer, were you surprised at all the way you were able to move the ball up and down against what has been a very stingy defense? Well, I think our offense is playing pretty well, and we're mixing the run and pass in there pretty good, and I think that's helping us. But uh, you don't have to tell me about this South Carolina defense. I'll tell you, they're tough, and uh, what's the real importance is we come back out and move in the second half. This, uh, so far in this uh, series, Colin Mackey has been the person who's been able to hurt you. 
He won one in, uh, two years ago. Last year tied it with 50 seconds left. You anticipate this game once again coming down to the wire? Yeah, I think it's going to be tight in the fourth quarter, and I think it's going to be about a three-point game. So uh, I hope we got the, the right three. All right, I know you want to be with your team. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good luck in the second half. All right, we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening and watching Sportsnet. At halftime here at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia Tech, who scored the first 14 points of the game, leading South Carolina 14 7, and just the type game we expected. Rock 'em and sock 'em. The defenses have really prevailed. It really has been. I think Virginia Tech has done an excellent job in play action. They've really done a lot of work in, in trying to take some of the heat off of the quarterback, Will Fuhrer, by deceiving the defensive line and the linebackers, holding them at bay a little bit, and they've done an excellent job. They've scored two good touchdowns, and South Carolina has come back and gotten a touchdown in the second quarter, but it's still 14 to 7. Well, I think Frank Beamer's right. I think the fact that Fuhrer has been able to mix up the offense has been a big factor. Well, I just think with the play action that they've been doing, it's really held the, the defensive ends at bay, and they, they have really gotten turned around on a couple of plays. They've done a lot of draws. They've done a lot of rollouts. So it, it's been a well, well worked game plan for Virginia Tech this first half. And so the Hokies have taken the edge, 14 to 7, going for their third straight victory. And if they make it three in a row, it'll be the first time in a while that uh, Tech has won three straight games. But right now, they're in pretty good shape with a touchdown lead over South Carolina here at halftime. But uh, I want to talk to both you gentlemen about where you are taking your schools, what direction you're seeking. And let's start first with you, King, because it's been very much in the news about South Carolina recently and the Southeastern Conference. What can you tell us? Well, as you know, we've tried to position ourselves to have a choice to enter into an all-sports conference. Uh, we've worked very diligently during the last eight months to arrive at the position where we are today. Uh, we feel it's incumbent in order for our athletic department to continue to compete among the top ten in the nation across our 15 varsity sports that we need an infusion of about a million, million and a half dollars or more within our budget over the next uh, ten years for 2001. So we are in a good position now. We've met recently with a representative from the Southeastern Conference, and uh, we would just have to see where we go from there. Uh, we've been a member of the Metro for several years. It served us extremely well. We are very competitive there where they were, but football, you know, and, and uh, soccer and women's softball. So we're just seeing what happens day by day now, but we're very optimistic over the future. So you have an optimistic feeling? I very much do, certainly do. All right, David Brain, whose Virginia Tech team has also been a member of the Metro Conference. David, where do you see the future route for the Hokies? Well, we are in the same situation as South Carolina. We need to be in an all-sports revenue-sharing conference. Unluckily for Virginia Tech right now, we are not as far ahead as uh, South Carolina is, although we have worked very hard to position ourselves also. Our biggest problem today, as everybody knows, is that uh, we're in a location where we don't have a large TV market. So we have a lot, an awful lot of other things to offer, Jim, but as far as the dollars and cents of TV households, we don't have that. So if another conference takes us, it's going to have to be because of our academics and our athletic program rather than the number of season tickets we sell. And one word, where would you like to go? Well, we said at first that we we wanted to be in the ACC, but it looks like the ACC does not want us, so we're going to look elsewhere now. Okay, thank you very much, David Brain and King Dixon, for taking time to join us here at halftime. We'll be back with more halftime after these words from your local stations. This is Sportsnet. We've done the poorest job on. We haven't executed very well at all. We made some mistakes. We've run some poor routes and dropped balls. We mishandled a field goal snap down here that would have put us ahead three to nothing. We're not tackling very well. And they're breaking tackles, and they're doing a better job of tackling than we are, and we've got to do a better job this half of that. We just got to settle down. We've not had good third quarters. We've got to make sure this is a positive quarter for us. We've got to play hard, and we've got a chance to come back. If we're going to have a good season, we're going to have to come back. The storyline so far has been two impressive drives. You've had two. They've had two. The difference you didn't connect on that one. What happened on the snap? Was it a mishandled snap, a bad snap? Well, the ball looks like it's on the ground, but we got to get it on the tee, and the snapper's got to do it. It does a million times a day, so let's get it down and put it down. Thanks for joining us. Good luck in the second half. Jim, this game not atypical of the kind of matchups we've seen between these two uh, teams, in which the Gamecocks hold a slight advantage, 9-7-2, and two, I think it is. And mark my words, every year one team has jumped out on top, and the other team has mounted a comeback. There's a little foreshadowing for you, Jim. 
All right, well, this is the first time this year that South Carolina has been put in a position of having to come from behind as they trail Virginia Tech 14 to 7. Back for the start of the second half in a moment. Jerome Preston will kick off to start the second half for Virginia Tech. South Carolina had the second half option and chose to receive, and they got Robert Brooks back deep. We got a little news item to pass on to you following up our halftime interview with the athletic directors in a moment about expansion. We'll get to that here after we watch the second half kickoff. It's away from Brooks. Eddie Miller goes over, watched it bound out of bounds. That'll call for a five yard penalty against Virginia Tech, and they'll have to kick it from the 30 yard line. And I'm sure that South Carolina is going to call for that option penalty, hoping to get a little bit better. That gives us a chance to tell you we just heard a news report. The New Orleans Picayune Times will break a story on Monday that the Southeastern Conference will indeed expand to a 12-team league, and it will include the University of South Carolina. Now, that's the report we have here in the booth at halftime is that that story will come from the New Orleans Picayune Times newspaper on Monday, that South Carolina is headed for the SEC and a 12-member. If you want to look at two six-member lineups, you may be looking at an Eastern lineup in the SEC that will include Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, Auburn, and Alabama. Is that pretty tough? That sounds like murder's row, but that's just speculating on our part. We'll come back down here for, as uh, Preston will the kickoff again. He's not the regular kickoff man, but because of the swirling winds here at Lane Stadium, they've asked uh, Preston. Here's the deep kickoff headed for the end zone. Brooks is back at the goal line. Robert Brooks calling on his speed, caught from behind by the kicker and pulled down. Jerome Preston made the stop. And there's a look at the first half statistic-wise. Virginia Tech and South Carolina even in first downs. In uh, passing, you give the edge to Virginia Tech. They had the two passes for touchdowns. They had the big edge in scoring, of course, 14 to 7. Possession favoring South Carolina a little bit. But here's the first play of the third quarter. First down for the Gamecocks on their 14-yard line. They're back in a deep hole. And Bobby Fuller is there. Fuller gives to Dinkle. Looking for a hole in the middle. Not much opening. Dinkle is stopped up to pick up of about a one yard at the most. Melinda's Bird, the sophomore walk-on linebacker. Well, this isn't where the Carolina offense really needed to start this second half. They needed to get a good return. Brian Reeves, the place kicker, had a good deep kick. The blocks were set, but they were set too far in advance of Robert Brooks, and it's not like him to run sideways like he did to try and make yards. Well, that was a smart move, it looks like now, for Frank Beamer to call on another guy to kick that ball deep. Up the middle, it is incomplete pass, and a penalty flag for him. That was intended for Charles Stewart, and the defensive player was all over his back. Number 40, Rusty Pendleton, inside linebacker. Bobby trying to go to Stewart again, and again, Pendleton is hanging all over him right there. Late flag coming in. The Virginia Tech fans didn't appreciate it too Pass much. Interference. Defense. Call was made. Automatic first down. Spot foul. Bobby, it seems that Bobby is trying to force the ball into Charles Stewart a little bit because Pendleton is hanging all over him, and. It's very close as to whether it's a defensive pass interference or just an incomplete pass. A little separation there by Charles Stewart would help. Automatic first down at the South Carolina 21. Fuller's going to bring Brooks in motion back through the backfield, going to the right. Hand off on a slant to Dingle. Dingle tries to get the cut back and cannot. Stop short of the 25. Another big defensive play over there by linebacker Melendez Bird, number 44. Well, just a sprint, sprint out. Doran Herdman catches uh, Mike Dingle right on the thigh. I don't think Ken Watson quite made the block that he had anticipated on, on Doran Herdman. The gain is two. There are the figures on Dingle. It is second and eight, South Carolina, back on their 23. 
Fuller on uh, second down. Fuller fires a bullet caught by Miller at the 38. Hit down on the 39 by Rusty Pendleton. Well, Pendleton was putting pressure. It was Roger Garland, a linebacker, who went back and made the stop on fast Eddie Miller. Excellent catch by Eddie Miller. Running a plant. Bobby sets. Good protection by the offensive line. Excellent catch right there. Gets down before he really takes a good shot. Well, Miller, good, of course, good smart play. Miller, not only a great uh, receiver of the ball, but he's a threat once he gets it with his vaunted speed. He's the Metro 400 meter champion. First and 10 again for South Carolina at their 39. Single setback. Give on a change of direction to Dingle. Circling the corner. Dingle gets around the corner, gets it up over the 45, and he'll be stopped at the 46. Virginia Tech hasn't allowed Mike Dingle to get a lot of running room in there. Here he gets a little more running room and he shows what he can do with the football. A little shaking and baking. He hits the outside, puts on his speed, gets a good burst up in there for good yards. Dingle has shown no ill effects from the concussion. It is second down and three for South Carolina. Now at their 46. Fuller calls on Dingle and Dingle drives it close to the 50, may have the first down. Rusty Pendleton again hitting for the tackle for Tech. This is what I want to see him do with Mike Dingle. I want to see them get, get him the ball. Let it be the workhorse. Let him get into the flow of the football game. They're going to need him, and he's got to deliver. Well, Mike made it by a football length over the 50 and his first down. Sparky Woods hoping his team catches a fire here in third period. Fuller mixing up his play. Fuller is back in the pocket. Fuller fires it deep downfield to Miller. Miller's got it, and he's taken down about the 12. Great catch again by Eddie Miller on the fly pattern as Fuller was going for the bound. Greg Lasty covering him step for step, and Miller on the run makes a great catch. Good protection by the offensive line. Greg Lasseter again, one-on-one -on, -one on Eddie Miller. Great pass by Bobby Fuller lays it right in there Eddie goes high up to get the ball so the defensive man can't knock it down again a little little fake to Mike Dingle lays it up nicely to him Eddie Miller goes up in the air to make the catch Greg Lasseter is he's had his work cut out for him today with Eddie Miller that was a game to the 11 and it's first and 10 right there for the Gamecocks and here's Fuller faking to getting to Dingle going wide turns the corner and he's drilling out of bounds inside the 10 around the seven or eight yard line so in this position on the field, that's a pretty good game. Down here in four down territory. Good, good, good play to call when you've got first down inside the 10 yard line. I don't know if Mike Dingle. <laughs> I don't know if Mike Dingle was supposed to keep that ball or hand it off. Either way, we got a nice, nice gain on it. That was a nice fake that time by Fuller after he made the gift. Two wide receivers to the left. Let's see if Fuller looks for the end zone here. Second down. Gives to Dingle. Up the middle. Driving hard behind his lineman. Turns it down close to a first down around the one. Damian Russell had to finally come from safety to make to help make the stop for Virginia Tech. And Roger Garland. They'll take a look here to well, see if he made a first down. Ike Harris. Jay Killian. Hal Hamrick. Good surge by the offensive line. Mike Dingle fits right in behind him. Really keeps his legs turning and gets a nice, nice gain down the one yard line. Now, this has come all the way from their own 14 yard line. And this is exactly what they needed, Jim. They needed a good drive by that offense. They've gone 85 yards. They need one more. It's a first down. Dingle over the top touchdown. And that's what Mike Dingle does best. He's improving his overall game. But this is what he was known for the last couple of years, going over the top to get that one yard for the touchdown. Good surge by the offensive line. He goes over the top, takes a nice shot by Anthony Pack, spins off, takes a nice shot right there by Anthony Pack, spins off, and he gets in the end zone. Second touchdown today by Mike Dingle on the identical play, being congratulated over there by one of his teammates. And now here's Colin Mackin to try to make it 94 in a row. The spot, the kick is blocked. So the string is dead. Blocked in the end zone. And so it's going to remain a one-point lead. And for the second week in a row, Virginia Tech has blocked a kick for the point to protect a one-point lead. Last week they did it, and it was to mark the victory over East Carolina. And they block a kick here to kick a 
keep the lead at 14 points. It still looked like we're having a little trouble with the snap of the hole. I don't, I don't know if Collins slipped there, but he didn't get the ball up in the air very high. Virginia Tech got good surge on the defense. And that's, okay. a, that's, that's tough. That's well, tough to lose that kind of record. We'll come, be coming back here for the kickoff. South Carolina has come very much back in the game, but now still continues to trail by one point, 10.39 to go in the quarter. A long string is over for Colin Mackey after 93 straight. He kicks it off to Michael at the four. Michael looking for a block, comes over the 25, and is stacked up around the 28. That's a tough string to lose. He had 93 in a row. Had a little mishap that appeared on the uh, between the snapper, the holder, and the kicker. Colin didn't get real good foot on it. And that, that was a great string for him. That's a, he can get one, get another one started. Uh, Hopefully here in a few minutes. Leroy Jeter on the stop on that kickoff, and that's first down for Tech. Will Fuhrer still in there, faking Fuhrer, rolling, looking downfield, fires it to Mickle, Michael, and it's incomplete. Marcus Michael trying to cut back over the 40, had gone downfield and was covered beautifully down there by Cedric Surratt, and then circled back toward the passer, but couldn't get in position. Corey Miller, meantime, was making life miserable for Fuhrer. And so it goes just an incomplete pass. It'll be second and 10. Tech at its own 27. Nick Cullen, Jim, is just sliding in right behind the linebackers, just short of the corners and finding the open spot. Now, uh, here's the delay on the draw to Hebron. Hebron gets good yardage up to the 35. Picks up about eight before Patrick Hinton can get to him. That'll make it third down and two for Virginia Tech. Von Hebron with a 4.9 per rush. Average. He sticks it up in there. The offensive line really opens it up again. You've got a little play action that's that's throwing the South Carolina defensive front off a little bit. Just enough to hesitate for Von Hebron to get in there and make some yards. Here's the possession play for Fuhrer now. Third down and two at his 35. You got to get to the 37. He calls on the fullback, and I think Phil Bryant's got it. Looks like he goes to the 40, uh, 38. Corey Miller was on the stop. For South Carolina, it's first down for the Hokies at their 38-yard line. They run the fake toss again. Hit Phil Bryant on the dive, and he gets the first down. Corey Miller coming down the line real nice to make the tackle. Well, there's quite a battle going on down there between Eugene Chung, the great tackle for Tech, and Corey Miller. Here's Fuhrer, sideline. Sturdivant's got it out of bounds immediately at the 50 and gets uh, a first down. That was a beautifully timed throw and a nice route run by Michael Sturdivant. Had just enough for the first down. Ball will be spun at the 50-yard line, and it's Tech's ball first and 10, with 9.25 to go in the third quarter, and Tech leading by one point, 14 to 13. They've got a good kicker also in Mickey Thomas. Here's the pitch sweep, and coming wide is Kennedy. He was hit hard and then racked up by Patrick Hinton again. As he crosses the line, picks up three. Antonio Walker came in to help Hinton, and Joe Reeves was there along, alongside him to make the stop. Antonio Walker threw one one serious forearm in there. I think he I think he wanted to know where, let everybody know that he was he was around and he was tired of them getting so much yards through the pile. Well, he's a tough kid. Blocked two punts last year. Number one for a touchdown. Again, double wide receiver to the left, and Fuhrer back. Hands it off to his tail by Kennedy, runs on the arms of three tacklers, including Gerald Dixon, who wrap him up for no appreciable gain. Patrick Hinton was in on that play also. It's going to bring up third up. down. Just a little delayed draw. Again, Gerald Dixon, Kurt Wilson stack it up. They really played off their blocks nicely then. Just threw the offensive lineman to the side, and they were sitting right in the hole. Tony Kennedy had nowhere to go. Fuhrer hasn't struck through the air for any damage for a while. Here he is back in the pot, being chased by Miller, throws it off to Hebron for 50. Hebron cutting it back and getting open field. It's a foot race now. Hebron drives over the 10. Hebron scores. Touchdown. What a run by Hebron. Stacy Robinson just did not have the speed to overtake Vaughn Hebron. Uh, it was an excellent call. They had a South Carolina had a blitz on. They run the screen to Hebron. 
Everett cuts it back across the green and, and really makes an outstanding effort on it. A 47-yard strike. Hebron now has caught 20 passes for Hunt, or rather Fear completed 20 for 186 yards. Everybody's converging to the ball. Hebron cuts it all the way back across the field, and it's just a foot race. Thomas Terry, Terry. Yeah, Thomas kicks the point after touchdown easily. And Virginia Tech goes up by eight at 21 to three. That's the score, and we'll return with more after these messages from your local station. This is Sportsnet. South Carolina was penalized on that play, and it's going to be walked off here on the kickoff, which means Virginia Tech will kick off the 50-yard line, not the 35, and that drives the return men back in the end zone. But the Gamecocks have just been stunned by giving up the longest play of the season, 47 yards. Vaughn Hebron scoring for Virginia Tech to give them a little more breathing room at 21 to 13. This is where you have to watch for an onside kick. They're already at the 50-yard line. They squib it down around the 20-yard line, and then they got their long kicker in there. Here's a bounding kick, and it's grabbed here by defensive player. And coming up the middle is Ernest Dixon. Dixon, a blocker, returns it back over the 25, and South Carolina will start, will start here from its 26-yard line. You know, Jim, a lot of times, most, most teams put a big offensive lineman or a defensive lineman up there to help with the blocking. It's a good thing they have Ernest Dixon there because that's the second ball that's come to him, and he's been able to do something with it on the return. Dixon's only a freshman, 240-pounder. Bobby Fuller on first down, back in the pocket. Batted down, incomplete. Big lineman charging in there for Virginia Tech. Let's take another quick look at that uh, Virginia Tech score. South Carolina has a blitz on. William Fourier, Fourier, Fourier reads it well. Von Hebron's out there. He cuts it back across the grain really well and just out completely outraces the South Carolina secondary. Jerry Inman in hot pursuit right there. It is second down and 10 for South Carolina at 126. The crowd is really screaming here, and Bobby Fuller backs out. Cannot hear the snap signal. And of course, it's up to the home team now to get the crowd quieted down. If not, they can call a penalty. We've got timeout, and we'll be back here with South Carolina operating from deep in its own territory, trailing by eight. Well, here's the crowd again. Fuller's back, though. Fuller fires it up the middle. It's caught by Brooks at the 45, and Brooks taken down on the 48. That'll be a first down for South Carolina. Bobby Fuller probably called a timeout a while ago because of the crowd when it really wasn't necessary. It's up. Uh, if Bobby takes a deep drop here, Jim. Calvin Stevens does a good job of holding off his man for protection for it. He hits a strike to Robert Brooks on a deep crossing pattern. Really a nice game. Gets him out of a, out of a hole again. And now South Carolina comes in with double tight end. One set back, Mike Dingle. First down, Brooks comes in motion. And it is Fuller firing underneath to the tight end store. And Stewart is written down at the Tech 49 by P.J. Preston, a freshman linebacker, along with Stephen Holloway. It's good to see him using Charles Stewart a lot more. They've been trying to go to him today. He's really been swamped by Rusty Pendleton, but that time he got open on just a little, little tight end out in the flat. That catch a while ago by Robert Brooks was his 79th of his career and ties him, uh, puts him sixth place all time among South Carolina receivers. Play acts fake. Now they give it to Dingle coming wide left. Dingle hit at the 45 and dives forward to the 43. Damian Russell, the safety, stopping Mike Dingle as uh, Fuller now beginning to mix up his plays. Uh, they're trying to get outside a little bit. They can't run inside very well. Mike Dingle trying to use his speed a little bit. Tech defenders know that they really can't bring Mike Dingle down by hitting him high. So they're going for his legs and they're cutting his legs out and it's been very successful for him. About a yard short of a first down will be third and one. Mike Whitman comes in for double tight end. So both Whitman and Stewart are in there. And they've got a blocking back in Ken Watson. Power eye formation. And let's see if they go to Dingle to pick up the first down. 
Fuller gives to Dingle. Dingle hit behind the line. He will not make it. Great defensive play by Brian Campbell, a junior tackle from Salem, New Hampshire. What a play on Mike Dingle, dropping him for loss in the 45, and so it's fourth down, and Darren Parker trots back out for the Gamecocks. Well, Brian made an excellent surge there. He just busted right through the offensive line. Hit Mike Dingle about two yards deep in the backfield, and when you get get those big arms around you, it's tough to make a first down. Well, the coaches out here to take Antoine Rivens off the field. Antoine, who's a sophomore from Charlotte, didn't look like he wanted to leave the field, but he's being escorted off now by a couple of the assistants. And the kicking crew is on. There's Darren Parker. Parker, who has punted today. Best one was 59, which was his last punt. And he's only, line scrim is only 45 yards away from the Virginia Tech goal uh, end zone. Let's see if he goes for the corner or just tries to hang one high and get good coverage. Low snap. Parker puts it up high into the wind. Michael watches it hit over his head at the five and takes a South Carolina bounce. It's going to be down to the one yard line. Great coverage downfield that time. And Patrick Hinton was down there under that punt to kill it dead inside the Virginia Tech five. They're going to spot it about the two. Let's go to John Pritchett quickly. Thanks, Jim. Down on the sidelines, you can get a feel for the intensity of this game. It's a very, very physical game at this point. Jim, you hear a lot of talking, a lot of pushing and shoving. You can hear the pads really hitting down here. The crowd is starting to get into it, and although right now the Gamecocks are behind, it's a very, very close game. If anyone's winning the physical war, it's the Hokies. If the Gamecocks are going to mount a, a second-half comeback, in my estimation, it'll be one on the defensive front. Although we've seen a lot of impressive drives, the most impressive thing about these teams has been the fact that their front fours, and in the case of the Hokies, their wide tackle six are the most dominant parts. It's going to stay physical. Jim, back to you. Okay, and that was uh, Tony Kennedy coming out of his own end zone to get the ball out to the six-yard line and pick up a uh, buck three yards and give them a little more running room Patrick Hinton on the stop well it's Carolina defense is going to really have to come up with some big plays here to help the offense get some good field position here's fear on second down and seven draw play and to give it off to Bryant he has cut down a beautiful tackle by Hinton Boy, Patrick Hinton has had a, a very strong defensive performance for South Carolina number 46 a senior from Atlanta he led the tackles last year with 108 for the Gamecocks, has great range, and he's shown his All-America caliber today. He really held his ground well for the draw. Didn't take, didn't take the fake for the draw, sitting right there in the hole. Third down and seven, the middle linebacker got a hand. There's the pitch to Tony Kennedy, cuts it back, gets room, gets a first down up to the 14-yard line. Patrick Hinton again making the stop, but what a clutch run that was by Tony Kennedy, a sophomore out of the Washington, D.C. area from Bladensburg, Maryland. Virginia Tank has some horses in that backfield. Tony Kennedy making an excellent run here. Patrick Hinton hitting him after he had crossed the first down yardage. Offensive line really stretching the defensive line of South Carolina's down the line of scrimmage for him to break into a nice hole. South Carolina having to rest some of his defensive players. They've really been overworked here today. First down for Tech at the 14. The give is to Kennedy. Cuts outside the right and is cut down at the 20-yard line. Kicks, picks up a nice gain on the play. Keith McDonald made the stop for South Carolina, number 35. Keith, a senior from Roswell, Georgia. Switch from cornerback to rollerback from last year. A little off tackle. Really a nice block by Eugene Chung. Just caved in, caved in the entire left side of the South Carolina line and is able to get around the corner. Well, that Chung is a brown belt in judo, so you got to respect him. Here's Fira throwing underneath his fullback, and it's dropped by Brian, incomplete. It'll be third down and four for Virginia Tech at the Hokies 21. Play action. Watch what it does to Cedric Bembry right here. He's looking to his left. Furio's rolling out around him. Phil Bryant didn't quite look that one in long enough. Lamar Smith comes in replacing Bryant at fullback. The tailback is Tony Kennedy. Quarterback all the way is Will Fuhrer. It's third and four, and Fuhrer is back in the pocket. Pressure, Fuhrer throws it deep down the right side, incomplete. Threw it out of bounds. 
He was trying to go down there to Marcus. But, Ma Michael. And Leon Harris was covering. So it'll be punting situation now for the Hokies. Good stand by the defense. Now the, the special teams, the punt return team has to make something happen. This is where they can make up a lot of, lot of yardage by, and really set a big play. George Rush is in the on him. Great punt by Bosch. Rush is back. Makes a running catch over his shoulder at the 25. Tremendous punt. And Rush is going to be taken down hard on the 30 after just a short return. But what a tremendous clutch punt that was by Chris Bosch. And South Carolina had a rush on. Bosch really hit, hit the ball long. And Rush didn't have a chance to get any kind of return because he didn't have any blocking back there. We'll see you in two weeks, Saturday, October 13th at noon, South Carolina versus East Carolina in a live telecast. We hope you'll join us if you cannot be at williams Bryce to see the game yourself. First down now for South Carolina. Bobby Fuller at quarterback brings Brooks in motion. Fuller running out of the pocket. Fuller fumbles. Tech's going to recover. At the a penalty flag is down. So let's see what this is about. If the play goes, I think it's going to be Tech's ball. As coming out of there is Kirk Alexander, a backup safety, and Anthony Pack was also there, but there was a penalty flag thrown back at the line of scrimmage. I hear. We got the legal procedure. Yes, South Carolina is six on the line. The fumble is recovered by Virginia Tech. That's the first turnover of the game. Oh, Brooks going in motion. Looks like he's trying to call timeout. He turned up the field, and that could have been the illegal procedure right there. Well, I don't exactly know. I think they were in the wrong defense or in the wrong set for the defense that Virginia Tech was in. First turnover by, uh, by either team in the game, and Virginia Tech gets it in great field position for them. Bobby Fuller set back. Doesn't see anybody open. Really a great tackle. That ball was stripped away from him by Bernard Basham. What a name for a defensive player, Basham. Going wide left is uh, Kennedy, and he runs into a lot of trouble over there, and he's pounded out of bounds hard. There might have been a late hit there, but there's no flag. That's why you hear the crowd complaining here for Virginia Tech. Jim Pine threw a great well, key block that time for Tony Kennedy. Well, Cedric Surratt hit him clearly out of bounds, and there is a flag on the field, so it'll be... This is going to put the South Carolina in a bad straight right here. Uh, it's 15 yard penalty, half the distance. Takes it down to the 14 yard line. And it'll be a first down there for Virginia Tech. So the Hokies are threatening perhaps put this game beyond reach right here. They're leading 21 to 13. Still two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. So there's a lot of time. But the trend of this game has been very much in the favor of Virginia Tech. Hebron is back in there at tailback, and he's been poisoned today for the game box. Sure. Fakes the pitch, gives it up the middle of his fullback, and Bryant <laughs> runs into the arms of Corey Miller, and that's all. Well, Virginia Tech certainly isn't sitting down on this lead at all. They are opening things up, continuously running the running the draw, the play fakes. Here we are with the quick toss of fake again. Corey Miller's sitting right in the hole, waiting on Phil, Phil Bryant, but he gets three yards. Well, you can get mugged running that way. Three yard gain to the 11, and it is second down and seven for Virginia Tech, who's threatening here to add on to their lead with less than two minutes to go in the third quarter. Fuhrer, and he'll help him up the middle, help him to the five for a first down, I believe. Eugene Chung opened a gaping hole in the line that time and held him hit it at top speed. And they didn't catch him until he got to the four-yard line. Got the ball nice and deep to Von Hebron. It's a huge hole. Marty Dow has to really lunge in to make the tackle there. It is not a first down. It's going to be third down and inches for Tech right here at the South Carolina four-yard line. Well, like Keith that, McDonald. Uh, it might have been hurt because official called official time so McDonald could get out of the game. They bring Ricky Ferguson in to replace him at the rover back. Kind of a monster position in the defense. South Carolina, South Carolina, they think they've called timeout, but they don't have enough players on the field right now. 
three of their defensive players are over talking to the coaches. Now they're trying to call a timeout. And that leaves South Carolina with only one timeout in the ball game. With a minute and 13 seconds remaining in the third period. And the Gamecocks does not have appeared as sharp today as they were in the first two victories. No, they really haven't. There are a lot of little things going on. They've given up a couple of big plays. Two big play pass plays for touchdowns, and that's not like the South Carolina defense at all. Right here, third and short. They need a goal line stand. A little confusion. I think the ref started a little bit of this. He called, blows the whistle, calls a, a referee timeout, an official timeout. McDonald goes off the field. South Carolina's defense thinks it's a timeout, so they go walking over, and the ref blows the whistle to start play again. Saw a little confusion all over the field. Now explain this to me. McDonald's back in the lineup. How does this happen? Well, that's what I can't understand is why the official, you know, he's limping around. He might be playing possum out there. You never know. They may think that he's hurt a little bit, so the quarterback goes to him. But when he called and told, sent McDonald off the field because he was limping, uh, it really started a lot of confusion. But McDonald has to sit out one snap, and he's not. He, the ball has not been snapped yet, and McDonald's back in the lineup. Hebron is back in there at tailback for Virginia Tech. They have third down and just uh, inches to go here, less than a foot, it would appear, at the four-yard line to get a first down. Here's some Virginia really romping over Duke. Uh, they were the co-champions last year of the ACC. So Virginia said, I have none of that this time. Here's the third down play now, and the give. And there is a good penetration and a loss on the play to Hebron. Somebody really dived through there and upended Hebron. Gerald Wilson, I believe. Gerald Dixon makes a great play coming off the corner to upend him right there. Gerald Dixon and Kurt Wilson really doing a good job of getting penetration. Now, this will bring the field goal unit on. Well, Mickey Thomas, who missed one for this range last week against East Carolina, but this time he's got a good angle right out in the middle in front of the goal post. It's like kicking an extra point almost. It'll be a 22-yard attempt. There's a snap he it. and the kick is up, and it is good. So Thomas has three more points to the lead. Now it's 24 to 13. Virginia Tech up to lead to 11 points, and South Carolina now must score two touchdowns. Yes, they really, they've got their work cut out for them. You don't see that straight on kicking very often anymore. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's got a, kind of a dinosaur of football. I think the last front of, straight on kick I remember was right here at Virginia Tech with the guy they had before Thomas came on. 33 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Virginia Tech stopped at the seven yard line on their drive and on a three point field goal by Mickey Thomas and it's 24 to 13. And back comes the receiving team for the Gamecocks. That means that Robert Brooks will be back deep along with Frank Adams and Eddie Miller. And up uh, in the short position is number 40, Ernest Dixon, who has fielded the last two kickoffs. John Burke will kick off for Virginia Tech. He's in there because he can kick the ball longer than Thomas. There's a scoring drive. A little over two minutes to go 31 yards. Here's the kick by Burke driving Brooks back deep in the end zone. He'll down it eight yards deep in the end zone. Not wanting, seeing great coverage coming toward him from Tech. Chooses to start from the 20 yard line. So South Carolina has its work cut out now. They're down by 11 points with 33 seconds yet to go in the third period. And they get the ball 80 yards away at the 20 yard line. Well, when this fourth quarter comes up, Jim, they will have the wind at the back, and that should help them with their passing game and their kicking game, actually. Bobby Fuller puts two wide receivers to the right. Setback is Dingle. He gives it to Dingle. Cuts back on the right side, takes a tackle with him for a couple of yards. Anthony Pack carries him up over the 25, and Dingle's going to be down on the 27. Pick up of seven to make it second and three. The clock now running into the final 17 seconds. And we possibly will not have another play here in the third period. They've got 10 seconds to get this playoff as Fuller brings them up to the line. 
down to four seconds. And the supporters coming to an end now. Here it is, second down and three, and that'll be it. The third period is over, and Virginia Tech had the better of it in that quarter. We'll return with more after these messages from their local station. This is Sportsnet. And helped on that game, which is good for first down. Darwin Herdman made the stop, but not before Dingle reached the 32 for a first down. The first and ten game Cox. Oh, <clears throat> really trying to sweep left, trying to get Mike Dingle outside. The only reason Bobby Fuller was there to make that block because he carried out a good fake after he handed off to Mike Dingle. Now here's Fuller back in the park, throwing down to Brooks at the 45. Stopped in tech territory on the 42 by Todd Brown. Oh, uh, Fuller goes overhead again to Robert Brooks, who's become South Carolina's Ike, sixth inning pass receiver of all time. Ike Harris, Jay Killian, Hal Hamrick, Antoine Ravines, and Calvin Stevens giving them good protection. Hits a deep crossing route to Robert Brooks for a big game. That's his 80th career reception. He's coming right up the ladder among all time receivers. But he put that one right in on the money. Another first down for Fuller. He gives to Dingle through the middle. Dingle dives inside the 35 and is cut down on the 34. About two yards short of a first down. Damon Russell made the stop at the end of the eight yard run up the middle by Mike Dingle. Again, good blocking by the offensive line. He opened up a large hole. Mike Dingle surges forward and really takes a big lunge to get an extra two or three yards. That's what happened in the third period. Virginia Tech out rushing South Carolina by 22 yards and out passing them by a better than 100 to widen their lead. Bobby Fuller by being charged back there and sacked. Fuller was going to try to get rid of the ball but could not. Brian Campbell makes another big defensive play for Virginia Tech. Second sack of the day against Fuller. Uh, Calvin Steven goes outside, and Brian Campbell just surges right up through him. Bobby Fuller had, didn't even have room to breathe on that. He thought about getting rid of the pad, the ball, but he tucked it away instead so he wouldn't get intentional grounding on him. All right, set up third and two. Now it is third and 14. A big loss in the play. Let's see if Fuller can make it up. Third down play. And there goes Tech offsides. Penalty flags go down. But breaking hard there looked like Archie Hopkins, an outside linebacker. And he was in the South Carolina backfield before the ball was even snapped. And they're calling it against South Carolina. Another Dead ball. Movement in the line. Snap infraction. South Carolina. Still third down. So a false start or dead ball infraction against South Carolina. Cost them five more yards. And it's back across the 50 to the Gamecocks territory on the 48. And now it's third down and about a mile and a half. They're going to go all the way to the Virginia Tech 32. 20. Third and 20. And Fuller backpedaling in the pocket. Fuller being run out of the pocket. Flushed out of there. Still looking. Fires it and it is caught by Brooks. An incredible catch by Robert Brooks. And he was really creamed as that ball got there. Oh, Bobby did an excellent job of getting out of a, a pocket that had just completely closed on him. Tech knew he was going to have to pass. They pinned their ears back and came after him. Bobby slides to his right or to his left and hits a hits a Robert Brooks coming down the left side and really makes an excellent catch. Well, They're going for it on this fourth down. Tell me how he held that ball. Was fourth and one, and South Carolina's going to go for it. Here, this could be the big play of the quarter. South Carolina lead by 11, and now time is called by Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, seeing that uh, South Carolina was going for it on fourth down, calls for timeout. 11:49 to go in the game. The Gamecocks trail 24 to 13. We'll be right back. Robert Brooks, who's made five catches for 101 yards, has almost equal what he's done the previous two games total. Fourth and one for South Carolina. Dingle. Dingle through the middle. He made it, I believe. Looks like he gets to the 31. A powerful run into a big pileup. Big play right there for the South Carolina offense. They needed a good surge. The offensive line gave it to him. Robert hits it in there real hard. And he got the first down. Boy, count. 
Credit Antoine Livens and Cal Stevens that time with a couple of really big blocks. They came off the ball blasting. First down, Carl Platt is back in the lineup now for South Carolina. He's wide to the right side. Brooks is in the slot. They're probably going to be double teaming Brooks. A handoff is to Dingle, circling the right side. Dingle dives down close to the 20. Maybe another first down, but there's a penalty flag down here. Well, let's see if this is going to be called out. Dingle dives to the 20, which would have been a first down. Now, one of the officials is explaining things to the Gamecocks, and they're beginning to retreat back upfield. So that might be a tip-off. It's going to be a penalty against South Carolina. Damon Russell was able to trip up Dingle. Here is uh, Terry Mock, the referee. Holding South Carolina. Repeat first down. Charles Stewart looked a little upset when he saw the flag. You can see it right here. I think he hooks the tackle, hooks the defensive end a little bit. It's just out of your screen to really spring Mike Dingle, and I think that's what the flag was on. Well, maybe that has something to do with the fact that Dingle, Dingle gained 10 yards. Well, they've been trying to get Mike out the second half. He's trying to get him out around the, the ends, let him use his speed to get, uh, get some yardage, and it's worked. Uh, but holding does help. First and 20. Last time he had 20 to go, Bobby Fuller went to Robert Brooks. Now it is first and 20 from the 41. Here is Fuller back going on the sidelines to Miller, and it's off his fingertips incomplete. Miller at the sidelines was hit just as the ball got there by Darwin Herdman, an outside linebacker, and it'll bring up second and 20 now for uh, the Gamecocks in the 41. Tough pass to make. Long, deep out. Melendez Bird covered underneath. Eddie got his hands on it, but couldn't quite hold on and stay in bounds. Now there's three wide receivers for South Carolina. It is second down and 20, and Fuller's going to be sending out a lot of receivers right here. Fuller in the pocket. Ducks hit and fumbles, and South Carolina, I believe, comes up with it. So that time, Fuller coughed up the ball, but the Gamecocks were able to cover it. A big lineman. Uh, the pocket just caved in. Good defensive surge by Virginia Tech. Bobby gets away from one right when he gets ready to cock his arm. Ball stripped. Antoine Ravines makes a, does a good job of falling on that ball, so the Virginia Tech doesn't recover it. So now it is uh, getting pushed back upfield. Though it's third down and 20. Uh, Six yards, third and 26 for South Carolina. We've got to go to the 21. Fuller back, running out of the pocket. Fuller fires it deep downfield for Miller in the end zone, incomplete. Miller was being covered all the way by Scott Rice, the cornerback, and the punting unit comes in. So the Gamecocks are stopped with 10 minutes to go in the game. And now the clock becomes a big factor. For well, that's an excellent, excellent defensive series for Virginia Tech. They had a couple of penalties there to help them out, but they put a lot of pressure on Bobby Fuller. Really rattled the South Carolina offense, and instead of going forward toward the goal line, they go backwards. Well, now you know that Darren Parker is relieved to have the wind at his back for a change. Single safety is Marcus Michael for Virginia Tech. Parker's had to kicked the last few times in the third quarter against the man now has it coming more to his back low snap but Darren gets a high twisting spiral that's over the head of Michael and takes a good South Carolina bat down at the three great coverage again as Parker puts one inside the five and it's down right there at the three three yard line. A little smile from Darren Parker there. He knows he got a great bounce and with that ball shaped like it is sometimes you get those. Less than 10 minutes to go. 24 13 Tech will return with more after these messages from your local station. This is Sportsnet. Use the clock. Eat up time. They've got an 11 point lead. 24 13. Tech takes over its own three. First and 10. Will Fuhrer quarterbacking. One wide receiver to the left, a pro set, and up the middle fullback Bryant is cracked at the four and pounded back pretty good by one of the South Carolina defenders. Number 64, Marty Dye was. Another all-star candidate in that front wall for the Gamecocks. Oh, well, Virginia Tech just doesn't want to do anything stupid down here. They want to play good, smart, solid football, try to get a little room instead of giving up a big play down here in their territory. 
They give it to Hebron. Hebron hits the left side. Cracks through the, a little bit of the seam there for a short gain and is hit at the seven or eight yard line. I haven't seen one South Carolina defender bring Von Hebron down by himself. It's usually two or three guys, and he's still trying to drag him forward. Well, here's a big play here if South Carolina can stop them. They can get that tech defense back on the field. It's third down and five. The ball at the eight yard line. There's fear of firing up the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Hebron and broken up. And for just for a slight moment there, that ball was in the air. And Surratt might have had a chance to get to it. Well, Will Fury threw this ball a little behind Von Hebron, or he would have been going for a touchdown. He split the seam of the safeties. And if it would have been just a little in front of him, it would have been six points for Virginia Tech. Now, Virginia Tech's being charged with a timeout here because the player was late getting on the field. Virginia Tech was trying to rush a player on the field, and they got him on there too late, and the officials charged Tech with uh, one of their two remaining timeouts. So Tech will have one remaining. South Carolina has one remaining. Eight minutes, 48 seconds to go. Tech will have to kick it out of their own end zone. And South Carolina sends back one of its stars today, Robert Brooks, to see if the speedster can get him back in field position. Let's go quickly to John Pritchett. Thanks, Jim. A brief injury report. I talked briefly with the Gamecocks athletic trainer, Rod Walters. He said that uh, two knee injuries have sidelined a couple of Gamecocks. Punt returner George Rush, and you'll probably see Robert Brooks in for him. Of course, Carl Platt is the normal punt returner, and he won't be playing either in that position. And then secondly, rover back Keith McDonald is out, and the Gamecocks are going to have to go without both of them in this ballgame. Also, it's been a while since uh, I have seen Stacy Robinson out there because Cedric Surratt's been playing a lot at right cornerback. So I don't know whether there's anything wrong with Robinson or not. Jim, but Robert Brooks ought to play about 35 yards on this punt. The stiff wind blowing into the Virginia Tech's face. It's going to really have to hit a good ball to get it through there. Here is the punt away as a twisting punt. Brooks takes it at the 42, and he's spilled as he cuts inside the 40 down to the 38 so it's going to be pretty good field position for South Carolina they'll have it in Virginia Virginia Tech territory in the neighborhood of the uh, 38 or 39 yard line it's good to see Robert Brooks fielding the ball in the past couple of games the punt returners have let the ball hit the ground they've taken some unfortunate bounces for the Gamecocks and Robert caught the ball and got as much as he could up the field with that one Carl Platt's in there, wide to the left with Brooks in the slot. First down play for Bobby Fuller at the Virginia Tech 37. And they give us to Dingle. Dingle takes it over left tackle, drives it inside the 35-yard line, and is dropped on the 32 or 33 by Roger Garland, a linebacker in the Tech defense. And now with eight minutes and 20 seconds to go, and the score is Virginia Tech 24, South Carolina 13. So judging the time, you'd say that South Carolina almost has to score on this possession. Faking blitz. Fuller, here they come. Fuller fires at the sidelines, and he's got his man over there. That's Brooks. Dodge Brooks a tackle. Brooks comes down the middle inside the 20 to the 16 for a first down. What a blue chip player today has been Robert Brooks, a junior from Greenwood, South Carolina. Excellent blocking, excellent picking up the blitz here by Mike Dingle. Bobby Fuller hits a wide open. Robert Brooks makes a good run. Antoine Ravines gets over there and makes a nice block right there to spring him a little bit further down the field. First down at the Virginia Tech 16. Brooks is in the slot on the right. The wide receiver is Miller. Fuller is bringing Brooks in motion back to the left side. And here is Fuller. Good protection. Fuller fires in the end zone for Brooks. And it is broken up and a flag goes down. That's going to be interference against the Virginia Tech. In the old days, it would have been South Carolina's ball at the one-yard line. But these are not old days, right? That's a, uh, yeah, normally that, if it's in the end zone, uh, Greg Laster's the man who's tough, guilty. Tough ball to throw in there. Bobby puts it on a dime. 
but really had a hold of his jersey the entire way. Greg Lasseter, a but victim again. Remember, you only need one foot down in college football, so he probably prevented a touchdown there. I think so. I think Bob Robert had uh, had enough of a hand on it. Of holding on the defense, holding an eligible receiver, half the distance to the goal penalty, first down. The half the distance penalty takes it inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for South Carolina at the Virginia Tech eight yard line. So buckle up all your straps. We may be headed down here to another stirring finish between these two with 725 yet to go. Well, Robert Brooks has been the money man so far today. Six catches, 118 yards, and I think they're, they're going to continue to go to him. Well, Robert Brooks and Bobby Fuller. Fuller on the pit. Here's Fuller back into the pocket. Full of fires him. Touchdown to Dingle. South Carolina back in the game. Dingle beat Anthony Pack. And Brooks hit him on the dead run at the three yard line. And Mike takes it in. Great call by Sparky Woods. Had been thrown to Robert Brooks. Sends Mike Dingle out of the backfield right up underneath the linebackers. Hits him with a nice strike. Mike Dingle gets into the end zone. Now, do you go for two here and try to get within a field goal of a tie? It looks like they're going for two. Ball spotted on the three, and they have it on the hash mark. South Carolina will go for two points, try to pull within three points. It's a good call. Oh, they're going to need a touchdown otherwise anyway, even with a kick. Here comes Fuller looking for two points, fires it. Good! Brooks! Robert Brooks makes the catch, and it's a three-point margin. 24-21, and don't go away. Remember a year ago when Colin Mackey with less than a minute to go tied the game, and now the stage may be set with over seven minutes yet. That could play. be the biggest play of the day right there. South Carolina rushed up to get set before Virginia Tech could get the defense they wanted out. Bobby throws a great strike to Robert Brooks for the two-point conversion. Oh, this excitement continues from Lane Sam and Blacksburg when we come back. It's now 24-21 game. Colin Mackey kicks it off deep. Back in the end zone is Michael, and he'll have to down it back in the corner. And Virginia Tech will come out to the 20, first and 10. Let's take another look at that two-point conversion. Uh, South Carolina rushes up to the line of scrimmage, so Virginia Tech couldn't get their, their defense in order. They send Brooks in motion, send him out into the flats. Bobby rolls that way, hits him with a dead strike. Great two-point conversion for the South Carolina game. Brooks, eight catches for 121 yards. That's a big day. That, that's right. the money, man, and they're going to count really on him down day. the stretch. Now it's up to the defense of South Carolina trying to stop the Hokies, something they've had little success in today. Fuhrer is out there. Michael in motion back to his uh, backfield. Fumble. Big scramble. And South Carolina's got it. Gamecocks ball at the 18-yard line. What a break. It looked like Will Fury was a little confused here. He sent Michael in motion. He was watching him come across when the ball was snapped. He didn't get a good handle on it. South Carolina's defense comes up with a big turnover. Big play for the Gamecocks. Hopefully the offense will be able to take, take advantage of it and get six points out of it. Gerald Dixon from Rock Hill, a junior. Out of junior college, made the recovery at the 19-yard line. Great opportunity now for the Gamecocks. They're at the Virginia Tech 19-yard line. First down. Brooks and Fuller back in there. They give it to Dingle. He swings outside, tries to cut back, lost his footing, goes down after a gain of about a yard to the 18. So it'll be second down and nine. However, right now, South Carolina, with the wind in its back, would be in range for Colin Mackey. Exactly right. Mike's trying to get outside, slips a little bit on the wet turf. Doesn't get much out of it right there. They need they need to get in the end zone on this drive. Defense has come up with a big play. Now the offense has to capitalize. The big play man Brooks is wide to the right. Eddie Miller to the left. Bengal is playing a very deep tailback. And here is Fuller back. Fuller being sacked. Cut behind the line and taken down by Todd Brown. Big play by the senior linebacker. The left hand for Baltimore. Todd Brown, number 50. Well, Todd Brown just ran right around Calvin Stevens here. Bobby didn't even see him coming until he was right up on him. Ran right around Calvin. That's a big sack. Big sack right there. It'll be third down from the 26-yard line. They've got to go to the nine. I would, I would, we 
to the guess they need about 10 more yards for a, a good Colin Mackey field goal. Third and 17. Let's see if uh, Fuller goes back to Brooks one more time. Here is Fuller looking. Fuller fires it down the left side. Touchdown to Miller. South Carolina takes the lead. Unbelievable. Excellent pass by Bobby Fuller. The offensive line gives him the kind of protection he needs. The, he hits a perfect strike to Eddie Miller running a deep post. Six points. What a comeback in the There's fourth Bobby, period. I mean, really throws a great strike to Eddie Miller. Led him perfectly. There, that was the first fumble by lost by Tech, and it really hurt him. Came back to Holland. Colin Mackey starts a new string now with a point that's good, and South Carolina leads for the first time today, 28-24. And what an important point that was because now Tech has to score a touchdown. Exactly right. The field goal team and the extra point team has, has sort of been a nemesis for the Gamecocks today. They missed a field goal on a bad snap and a mishandle. And on the replay, again, Bobby, good protection by the offensive line. Bobby sets, throws a perfect strike to Eddie Miller for the touchdown. Great route, great throw, great protection. Eddie Miller may be the only player on the field that could have gotten to that pass with his well, great speed. As, as you saw in the replay, Bobby Fuller led him a good 15 yards, and Eddie just, Miller just ran out under. Still five minutes and 49 seconds to go, and Tech has already shown that it's an explosive team with Will Fuhrer and Vaughn Hepler. So don't go away. It's a long way from being finished. 28-24, South Carolina leads for the first time. As we told you, the first turnover loss by Tech by fumble this year, the first touchdown catch by Eddie Miller, and a new game. Mackey hits it hard. Back in the end zone is Michael at the goal line. Michael comes up field 20. 25, breaks a tackle, and then it's ridden down to 24, 29. So Tech now will have to come to mind. There's the summary after the fumble recovery at the 19-yard line. And what a big third down play. They had just gotten the sack by Bobby Fuller. It was third and about 15, and he throws the strike for the touchdown. Okay, Will Fuhrer now will go back to his aerial circus. He's got Michael wide to the left and a man in the slot. Here's Fuhrer back in the pocket. Good protection. Fires it underneath to Hedman. The running back of the 30. Hedman's going to be taken down out of bounds. Hit hard that time by Kurt Wilson, the co-captain who last year had the frustration of having to sit on the sidelines with an injury. Here's a guy who really loves action. Well, they're running the screen. Furrier looks to his right to try and deceive the, the defense a little bit. Throws back to Von Hebron on the, on the left side. Corey Miller, everybody converges on him. And Kurt Wilson said, I'm not letting you get out of my polls again. It's a loss of a yard in his second down 11 for Virginia Tech. Rolling right is Furrier. Furrier being collapsed on and sacked. At the 27, around South Carolina now is putting on the heat. Marty Dye was in there that time with Joe Reeves. There's the clock down in the corner. Under five minutes to go. Furrier's hurt. Furrier's coming up limping. Might well, that right wing will see Rod Woot. He really took a shot by Bembry. It looked like. Uh, Oh, what a, Dixon on the, tell, on the what a gutsy game this young man has played. There he is, Will Fuhrer. Got his 1940s haircut, but what a competitor. Out of Bellevue, Washington, in the great old Seattle area. 203 pound junior. Had a long rehabilitation after knee surgery from last year. And I wonder if it's the same knee. Well, they look like they're working on the left leg. I just know when he, he got sacked. Had two guys sandwiching him, and he really came down hard on it. Well, Virginia Tech taking advantage of this official timeout here to warm up Rod Wooten a little bit, because this thing has come all of a sudden. And it looks like at a critical stage of the game, Virginia Tech will have to change quarterbacks. Will Fuhrer, who has had quite a day, he's hit 23 out of, uh, no, that's not right. He's hit what? 23 passes for 187 yards. 
Gurrier rose to his right. He's looking back to try and throw a tight end screen to Marcus McClung. Mike Tolbert does an excellent job, and there you, he gets sandwiched in and probably gets his leg twisted under that pile. He's up and walking off the field with a little assistance. Well, they'll give there this. He is. <laughs> You'll see Dixon and and Die converge on him, and really looks like he got his knee bent down behind him. Well, this kid's played his heart out, but now Rod Wooden is going to come in cold off the bench and try to pick up his team, which he has done in the past. Wooden is a junior from Virginia Beach, takes the draw. Wooden with a deep drop down the middle, and it is broken up by Surratt. Intended there for Cullen. No flag on the play. That looked like a clean block. I think it was. It, Cedric Surratt made a good play on the ball, good break on the ball, and he got old ball. He went through the defender to get it, but I think it was a good no call. Wooten's, he's starting out, you know, they warmed him up. He's starting out right away. He goes right over the top. He got all ball on that. He went through the receiver after he made contact with the ball. Fourth down, here's the punt by Barsha. It's a short one, and it is actually being caught with a win. It's going to roll dead around the 40-yard line of South Carolina. South Carolina now has the football with 4.19 to go, and now it's the Gamecocks' turn to try and eat up some clock. What a big play the fumble was, Jim. Oh, turned the game completely around. Turned the game around. around. The Gamecocks score on a big third down play. Defense comes to life, shuts them down, and now they've got the ball in good field position. How about that for today's work? 15 out of 25 for over 200 yards and two touchdowns, 255 yards for Bobby Fuller, having another brilliant afternoon for the Gamecocks. Here's Fuller. Pro set this time as they come out of the eye. Two setbacks. Fuller gives to Dingle. Dingle cuts back to the left side. Dingle with room over the 50. Dingle headed for the sideline. Stiff arm because out of bounds inside the 30. Boy, he gave Greg Lester old fashioned stiff arm. This is what they've been trying to do in the second half, Jim. Trying to open up Mike Dingle a little bit. Get him outside so he can use his speed. Great blocking by the offensive line. Ken Watson makes a good kick out block there. Huge hole opens up and Mike Dingle's off to the races. Greg Lasseter really makes a touchdown save and tackle after a severe stiff arm by Mike Dingle. Hey, Lasseter may be on a liquid diet for a few days. Now it's a first down for South Carolina. Bobby Fuller continues to run things at uh, quarterback. First down on the Tech 30. Up the middle, Dingle gets a crack and takes it to the 25. Five-yard advance for Mike Dingle, who's been a workhorse today. So if if he was slowed down by the concussion two weeks ago, you never know it today. Well, he started out slow today. They were alternating, substituting him quite a bit. But this second half, he has been the workhorse. And it's good to see him put two arms around this ball to really cover that football up, hitting it up in there like he's doing. Sparky Wood said to, for South Carolina to have a great season, Dingle has got to gain 1,000 yards. He has 123 today on 30 carries. It is second down and five for South Carolina. Dingle to the left side, tries to cut back, but cannot elude the man over there, Archie Hopkins. Hopkins, there go flags all over the place. There might have been some late hitting in there, I don't know. But two flags were thrown after the play was stopped, and it was stopped for no big gain by Dingle. Might have gotten a yard or two at the Dead ball. This, Personal this is, foul. This is where the Virginia class of your, your organization. Okay. Yeah, this is against Virginia Tech. Personal foul. This is where your discipline really stands out. Mike Dingle hitting the ball, hitting up in here. Archie Hopkins comes flying across, makes a good stick on it. After the play's over, you've got unsportsmanlike penalty called on Virginia Tech, which is really unnecessary. And yeah. that's that's Damian Russell again, and that's his second one for the day, and that really hurts Virginia Tech. You've got to be able to keep cool under pressure, and right now this is a pressure situation, and Damian Russell didn't keep his cool, and it cost him 15 yards. First down for South Carolina at the Virginia Tech 12-yard line. Taking blitz is Tech. Bobby Fuller hands off to Dingle. Dingle cracks in the middle. Gets it inside the 10, but not much more. It's going to be a short gain here. Rusty Pendleton closed that gap down, along with Jimmy Whitten. Boy, Pendleton has been a busy man inside. Another Tech player is down. It looks like Darwin Herdman, the left outside linebacker, is getting up slowly here. And right now, the busiest man on the field is the tech trainer. But they've had some tough legs, the toughest one being the fumble they coughed up. 
at the 19 yard line that gave South Carolina new life and the Gamecocks uh, capitalized on the brilliant pass from uh, Fuller to Eddie Miller. No. Well, it shows the kind of physical game that we're having here, Jim. South Carolina's lost a couple of key players. Virginia Tech, a couple of their key players, especially their quarterback. All right, let's give thanks here to the folks who are responsible for putting this show on the air today. Our executive producer is Jim Forrest. Our regular producer, Toby Jenkins. Our director, Lynn Warrington. Our technical director, Chuck May. And a whole cast of others. We also want to thank uh, Jack Williams, uh, the D sports information director of Virginia Tech, and Tom Price and Kerry Tharp of the sports information department at uh, South Carolina, to both the uh, coaching staffs, to the athletic directors who are our guests here at halftime. And we'll repeat that little news bit in case you joined us late. We have a report here today in Blacksburg that the New Orleans Picayune Times will break a story on Monday that the Southeastern Conference will expand, will announce a plan to expand to 12 teams, including South Carolina. Now that's on the basis of a report that we have here, and we have no concrete evidence other than that that it's going to be printed by the Picky and Times in New Orleans on Monday. Second down play for South Carolina inside the Virginia Tech 10 yard line. It's second down and six. And they give it to Dingle, swinging wide, turns on the steam, he'll score. Yep, touchdown. Dingle goes airborne for his third touchdown of the game. Scott Rice was waiting to hit him, and Dingle just went alley oop. I'll see you later. He did go flying over into the end zone, but he hurt his leg in the meantime. I hope he'll be all right. There he is. They're trying to get him outside again. They've been doing it the entire second half. Excellent blocking again by Ken Watson. Goes flying over the, the tackler, but he comes down hard on that left leg. Well, right in the small of and his back. And he's limping a little bit. I hope he'll be all right. Again, good blocking up front. Dingle on the sweep out wide. Just leaps. That's what we like to see from Mike Dingle. Colin Mackey with authority drills went through here. Colin had his string snapped here today after 93 in a row. A historic string for South Carolina and kicking points after touchdown. Here's Mike Dingle, his fourth TD today. Mike, that's an excellent day for you. Who gets Ford the game running? ball, Dingle or Robert Brooks? Or Bobby Fuller. That's right. Now you've got a lot of boys, guys in there that have played excellent. Well, there's Dingle, who two weeks ago had to leave the game against North Carolina with a concussion, and he has come back with a vengeance today. School record fourth TD today. Well, everybody was worried about who's going to replace Harold Green. Take a look, folks. Number six. Johnny Ski, what's up? Good game today, Mike Dingle. 221 to go. It is now 35-24. One more shot of it. Again, the entire second half. The workhorse Mike Dingle trying to get him outside so he can use his speed. Good blocking by Ken Watson right here, holding the linebacker. Mike Dingle goes airborne. Six points. Good call by Sparky Woods. Virginia Tech now needs two scores, a touchdown, two-point conversion, a field goal to tie the game. Well, it's sort of deja vu from about four minutes That's ago. Exactly. South Carolina needed that. Completely and turned now around. Now it's turned around. It's gone from 11 points down to 11 points up for South Carolina. Michael driven deep in his end zone by Mackey, and they'll have to bring it out to the 20-yard line. Touchback. Colin has been Virginia kicking. Tech. With that wind behind him, Collins has been kicking the ball very well and really limiting Michael to getting any kind of return yardage because he is a dangerous man. You know, that's been no small factor, Max. I'm glad you brought it up again because when the fourth period started, South Carolina was down by 11, and the wind suddenly came to their backs. That's I think it helped the passing game, the kicking game, the short punch from Virginia Tech had given South Carolina a good field position. Now, Fuhrer is back in there at quarterback. His pass is knocked down by Corey Miller. Boy, if Corey Miller doesn't get some all American recognition this year. Corey Miller got his ankle rolled just then. He hopped up, deflected the pass, but he's up limping now. Five plays, 59 yards, minute 58. That's an excellent drive. Good field position, got him that off the short punt. Mike Dingle, who's been very productive today for the Gamecocks, four touchdowns and over 100 yards receiving for Robert Brooks, and they have been heroes in the ultimate today for the Garnet in Black. 
now we've got, I think, an official timeout on the field because of it. No, they're going to charge the timeout to South Carolina. Two minutes, 16 seconds to go. And Jim, do you know that King Dixon was one of the first to set 3D records, three touchdowns in a game? Mike Dingle has broken his record along with a couple of others with three touchdowns in a game. Uh, Mike Dingle, King Dixon, the athletic director, the University of South Carolina was the first to have three touchdowns in one game. All right, I'll tell you a secret. Neither King nor his beautiful wife, Augusta, really care. <laughs> but they like to see the, the score up on yeah. that scoreboard. They're Mike gonna, Dingle with his four touchdowns. They're going to enjoy that trip back to Columbia if the score holds up as it is today. They're looking over Corey Miller on the sidelines right now. It took four touchdowns by Mike Dingle for the score to be what it is. A uh, loss of Corey Miller, of course, could be very vital, but there are some good backup men in this defensive scheme for South Carolina. Troy he just, Duke will come in for him right now. Cedric Bembry and Pat Blackwell and Bobby Brown. The names of, there's King Dixon. He's gone down on the field to really enjoy this. I think he had to go congratulate Mike Dingle. Well, I don't blame him. Broke his record, and he's the first time there to shake his hand. Fuhrer dropping back on second down and 10. Fuhrer deep downfield. Incomplete, thrown short. Intended that for the tight end, Marcus McClung. And it falls incomplete. South Carolina had about three men back there defending. But uh, Fuhrer knows one thing. He's got to score, and he's got to score quickly for Virginia Tech to have any prayer of getting back in this game. They're well, about 11 points with 2.10 remaining. And South Carolina knows they have to pass, so they're going to put a good pass rush on him. Plus, they're going to play, you know, with six or seven defensive backs. Leon Harris, 15 yards deep that time. Up the middle, it goes to help him look out. This guy's dynamite. They hit him down, I think, short of the first down. Looked like he had to go to the 30. I don't think he quite made the 30-yard line. He tried to reach the ball forward. And let's see where they mark. It all depends on the spot here, whether that's a first down or not. Keith McDonald on the stop. Boy, Hebron's had a big game. Hebron ha has had an excellent game. A couple of big touchdown passes. Just an unfortunate turnover when it happened. Virginia Tech going for it on fourth down and inches here at their own 29. They give it to the fullback. He's got the first down. That is Phil Blind. Marty Dye hit him, but Blind just kept digging till he got enough for the first down. Only needed inches. There's Mike Dingle. What a day he's had. 137 yards on 33 carries, four touchdowns. That'd be a career for a lot of folks. That's the kind of day he needed against this Virginia Tech wide tackle six defense, though. Now here's Fuhrer back going down deep at his intercept. And back comes uh, Antonio Walker down over the 50 into Tech territory. Antonio Walker intercepting the first interception of the day for the Gamecocks. Second turnover in this quarter for Virginia Tech. And they have killed any hopes Tech had of pulling this upset. Fuhrer trying to go for a little more. Really just overthrows his tight end. Marcus McClung, great interception. Antonio Walker, now he's a happy man getting the high fives over there from his teammates. A junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. And now South Carolina just going to try to run out the clock. Minute 10 to go. Bobby Fuller drops down to one knee. Virginia Tech has one timeout to call. Unless they call it, Bobby can just run out the clock here. 59 seconds to go. The clock is running. It is second down and 12. But the clock is the big thing right now. And South Carolina down by 11 points with a quarter to go. Came off the floor led by Bobby Fuller, Mike Dingle, and Robert Brooks. And snatched the victory away from the teeth of defeat here today in Blacksburg, Virginia. And it's going to be three in a row now for the Gamecocks. We'll be heading on to Atlanta to take on Georgia Tech next Saturday. And what should be a crucial game for Sparky Woods team. Well Sparky wasn't very pleased coming out of the first half locker room coming for the second half because he just didn't think his team had executed. I think going in on after the game he's going to be ex very pleased at how his team came back from certain defeat with eight minutes to go and 11 points down to win this ball game. This will be the last play. Bobby Fuller just drops down to one knee and it's going to end on that. South Carolina coming from behind to defeat Virginia Tech and one that will remember, be remembered for years and years by the 42,000 that watch here today in Blacksburg.
There's the final score. South Carolina 35, Virginia Tech 24. We've got to get a quick word from Sparky. Here's John. Not, okay. Okay. Well, John will be over there in just a moment. Sparky Wood is trying to get over there to him. The band's having a good time, and 4,000 happy Gamecock fans are going to be singing down I-77 tonight. Well, it's good to see the support from South Carolina come up to Blacksburg, Virginia. Ended up being a beautiful day after a rainy start. Saw a great ball game. Saw an extremely physical ball game. Things look pretty tough for South Carolina. And South Carolina came back in the second half and really put a number on Virginia Tech. Well, now we're going down to John Pritchett. Thank you, Jim. We're the winning coach and Coach Sparky Woods. To be frank, in the fourth quarter, you won the toughness test, didn't you? Well, I really have to commend Virginia Tech. Well, they did a great job. They really got a rugged football team. They had a real good plan. Uh, we didn't execute very good, nor did we tackle very well, but we showed a lot of character in winning in the end. I'm awful proud of them to be able to stick in there and come through and win in the end. That's some real good key plays. I, I thought Mike Dingle played an excellent ball game. He did so many things protecting for the quarterback that gave us a chance to put it in the end zone. So it's great to come up here and be able to win. I hope we can get some of these execution things worked out. Penalties hurt us real bad. Congratulations. I know you want to go celebrate with your team. We'll see you in two weeks at home in East Carolina. It's a great win. Congratulations, South Carolina. Jim, we got to teach that coach how to smile and enjoy those victories. Jim, I'll see you in two weeks. Okay, John, and we'll have a final word in a moment. We'll come back after these messages from your local station. This is Sportsnet. By South Carolina, 22 points in the fourth quarter to come from 11 down to win by 11 using a fumble. Here's the play that brought South Carolina from behind to take the lead for good. Oh, great protection. Bobby Fuller to Eddie Miller. Great protection by the offensive line. Miller runs a deep post. Greg Lassiter just cannot keep up with him. Bobby hits him on the run. Touchdown. And Mike Dingo came back later to add his fourth touchdown of the day, and South Carolina had his third straight victory. We want to thank the folks who helped us in the booth today, our statistician Chris Macero, our spider Craig Kelly, our stage manager Dan Forrest. We'll see you next in two weeks from williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia when South Carolina entertains East Carolina Pirates live at noon on Saturday. Join us then. Now this is Jim Thacker for Max Runniger and John Pritchard saying so long. <laughs>